Man, here we are. Here we are. Welcome back to the Blackout Podcast. It's your boy ODM. Shout out to the blockheads out there because, you know, they're the new new, man. We finally got ourselves a name for our viewers, our day oneers. We call them the blockheads. Here we go. We're all blockheads up here. Sick ass name. Show the merch. Show show the merch. (laughs) There it is right there. Full sale right now. Hit us up in the cash app until we get a website, (laughs) damn it. Today's episode is brought to you by the Herrera Group, (coughs) holding it down in the real estate game for over 20 years. These cats, you already know they know their stuff. They mean business. When it comes to properties, the Herrera Group uh, ain't your average crew. They're all about the personalized touch. Whether you're copping, flipping, or investing in a crib, they got your back, all right? Nothing like a new casita out here in the IE. I'm just saying their motto is straight up. We hustle so you don't have to. Call them, 951-712-6068. 951 712 6068. That's the Herrera Group. Shout outs to Maria Herrera and Javier right there. We appreciate you guys stepping inside this podcast right now, man. Are you guys ready for Man, I just feel <laughs> like we just had the, the cast from Mi Vida Loca here. We did have the cast of Mi Vida Loca. And uh, and we're, we're back. You know what I'm saying? We have another actor here, guys. I got to welcome to the podcast a real special guest. Uh, uh, a primo, I feel like we're related, you know what I'm saying? Really? Somehow, some way, we've been chopping it up. This dude's been, you know, ripping it up for years on the big screen and the small screen, blowing up, you know, his skills, making a huge impact of the entertainment world. You, you knew him growing up, especially in the 90s, man. Classics like Selena, uh, where he played uh, young Abraham Quintanilla, or American Me, where he was uh, younger Santana. Let's give some love to my brother, our brother right here, Panchito Gomez. Thank you, thank you, Big shout out, big love to the people Shit. at the block. I'll party my man, ODM. I man. know this motherfucker for years. Hold that mic up closer like this. Oh, my bad, my bad, my, my bad, my bad, my bad. You'll never find. No, <laughs> <laughs> no big shout out to the block. I'll party, man. You guys are badass. I appreciate the love you give me. I've known this man for many years. He kind of remembers some things, but we, we were chopping it up earlier. Yeah. And shit comes back, you know. It's it's been a pleasure, man. Yeah. I've been a big fan of yours for many, many years. I told you that earlier. You were like, what the fuck, for real? Yeah, bro. I, it's just one of those humbling, uh, you know, conversations you don't expect to hear. But when it's like there in your face, because come on, likewise, you know what I meant there, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, watching you, like, I never knew that. Amen. And I know we were around the same crowds back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, we, we, we mixed it up a lot, you know. I was working a lot, and, um, you know, I was going through some some crazy times as far as, you know, with with a lot of the... the the, the negativity fell through with uh, with American me and blah blah blah. But um, I've been a hip hop head since I was a kid. I'm I'm old school. I'm from the Bronx, Puerto Rican. Uh, grew up in Spanish Harlem and in the boogie. I'm a, I'm an original rock steady crew member, and I grew up as, with hip hop. So when we came to California, my family and I um, I came as a kid. You know, hip hop was in hip hop then. It was it, we we called it rhyming, MC and shit mm. like that. So I was a kid. But then as actors, there's a few. We were just talking about a couple of other actors, friends of mine, in the '90s, bro. You know, hip hop was it was blending big out here in LA, and it was an underground crew. It was the fucking uh, what's it called, the Radio Tron. Remember the Radio Tron? That's right, Radio Tron. So people like Light of Shit of Brown, Frost, uh, Ice T, uh, Ice T, Easy, before NWA, even Turbo, Boogaloo Shrimp, Boogaloo and Shrimp. We had Michael um, Chambers. We had um, we had uh, Shabadoo, God bless his soul, Shabadoo. Shabadoo, Shabadoo yep. But as far as the music thing, you know, we had Frost, we had hip, we had um, ODM and, and and Bobby. God bless his soul, man, good brother. I miss him too. You know, it hurt me a lot when I when when he passed. So you know, we lost a good a good soldier and a very talented young man. But he's with us still. And anyway, makes a long story short. These guys kept us actors, especially the Latino actors, up on the game. We'd go in our dressing rooms and all oh, shit. Yo, oh, shit, light as shit, brown. Sunday afternoon, fucking uh, 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 metal man, Ace Ventirosa, Cypress Hill, and so forth. Um, so we were just as big fucking groupies of them as they as we found out. Not that we're groupies, but yeah, we I can say I was a groupie. Yeah. Nah, don't say I, that. No, no, my man. Y'all, y'all I'll take fan or I'll take, you okay, know, no, okay, yeah, but you colleague know. under the same umbrella. But. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, man, these boys are bad. This, this shit kept me going. It motivated me. You guys were young, and it was it was weird because, you know, I was young too, but not as young. I was a little older than you folks. Right. But I could see that, you know, you don't realize it later that this group of talented people right here right now are our future. So we, I didn't see it then, but I was like, yo, I was having fun. And it made, it motivated us. Jesse Borrego, Issa Morales, Ooh. Benjamin Bratt, myself, yes. uh, fucking Jimmy Smith. Uh, I could keep going on the, on the Latino names. Uh, fucking Benicio del Toro. Damn. We were all like sit back and listen to, to go into a, you know little parties that we had in our houses or apartments, and all we listened to is like shit around. You know what? Right. I believe that yeah. because Issa Morales, man, posted right like last year. Oh, he's he was a just big chilling, and he was 
bumping Sunday afternoon, and I'm like, yes, sir. Again, groupie yes, sir. stat. I don't want to call myself groupie, but like same but thing. You know what I mean? I didn't mean groupie. Nice. I mean, like, it goes like a huge, hand, like brother. a huge fan. It's yeah. like rappers of today. You know, they hanging out with fucking athletes, and athlete or they're hanging out with actors. Right. Yep. Same. In our day, it was the same shit. Mm-hmm. It went hand mm-hmm. in hand, and the, the, we were like a little ball. Manula, like there was only so many of us. Yeah. All those actors you just named, bro, mm-hmm. were just. Fucking doing it like I mean Jesse what I got me but you know with this with this with this movies maybe the Lorca yeah, he was doing fame at the time fame he was, he was doing that show fame at the time let's go back to this OG oh, oh, name drops yeah, over no, here shit, shit. We, and then we go to the, the B boys you got Mr. my crew from Rocksteady uh, Mr. Freeze Wiggles uh, shit uh, Fable and then we go to the guys from here Sugar Pop. Um, Bruno, Gerardo, Rico Suave was a pop up breaker that's right all the brothers, in colors yeah, all the yeah. Brothers. and we all used to hang out we used to go to the Palace. The radio. I was one of the only ones that went to the radio because everybody was scared to go on there. Explain Radio Tron in, 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 in a few words. The Radio Tron was, was, radio that, was a hideout, not a hideout. The only place that us underground hip hop, real hip hop, hardcore shit, not that, no offense to like, you know, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air and that shit, that was commercial rap, which was good. But we're talking Run DMC. We're talking shit that you couldn't hear on the radio. KDAY came up with that shit on Saturdays and Sundays in the evening. Remember? Underground, yeah. And you would hear that shit at like Who night. Who was that? Tony G? Ralph Tony, Tony G? Tony, yeah, G, Tony G? Julio G? Julio G? Fucking Mugs? Um, yeah, More shit. OGs in the game. And, and, yeah, there's a whole like all that raw uh, shit, huh? Uh, what's his name? The black kid? Um, Cooley? Is it Coolio? No, no, not Coolio. Joe Cooley? Joe Cooley. Joe Cooley. Bro, some boys used to mix it up. So we used to go... It was like Fridays and Saturdays, bro, and you saw every, yo, Ice-T was there. Yeah. And none of them dudes, none of us, I mean, me, I was probably one of the only actors that was, that, that was not afraid of hip-hop, but they, they it wasn't even called hip-hop yet. So you were an actor Ryan. in the club, or were you an active break dancer in the club? Because they had B-Boys there. Break. Yeah, I, I used to go to the club just chill. I, I, I broke, nobody messed with me. It was all I was doing the show called Hill Street Blues at the time. In the okay, 80s. okay. So I was on TV like every other fucking Thursday Sick. for like five years on and off. So as a matter of fact, the guy who owned the radios back then, Carmelo, his sister, ended up marrying a good friend of mine, the kid that played, the man that played Frog in, in um in Colors. He was in, in Hill Street Blues with me, Trinidad Silver. Frog was the redhead? No, Frog was the Oh the, Frog. Frog. Damn, you fucked Tri- up. You joined the gang. Right. right. I mean. He <laughs> was one of my best friends. He that he got killed in um by a drunk driver years ago, but his wife was Carmelo's sister. Carmelo was a man, the guy that, that ran the, the radio. We were kids. So, wait, 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 hold on. See, I heard, see, a rumor star, bro. Frog was like, after the movie Colors, yeah, somebody, some homies did him in. No, no, no. And, no. He, he life, was with his wife and his kid. He had just bought a truck. We were doing a seat. We just got picked up. Talk on, um, uh, Stephen Bosco, who did Hill Street Blues, um, had written a, a pilot, a TV pilot for, for Trinidad and for Michael Warren, who played Officer Hill on Hill Street. I was supposed to play uh, Trinidad's brother. We did the pilot. The pilot got picked up, and within a week, Trinidad was driving down Whittier Boulevard with his wife and his brand new baby yeah. in, a, in a brand new little pickup truck that he had just bought, and a drunk driver came and killed him. Damn. That's crucial. Yeah. That's sad. almost like, reminds me of like, like we were just talking about like DLC mm-hmm. and freak accidents, yeah. you know, how he got and just lost his voice in an accident. But, uh, uh, the, the, what a loss of a talent. I mean, not a lot. He's got his life. It's a good thing. He's alive. You know, but when you lose somebody like Rob, like Bobby. Right. You lose Trinidad. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of people that get, you know, I, for, I lost my wife five years of cancer. When you lose something, somebody that close, you go, wow, they didn't really have a chance to fucking fulfill. I mean, for us, they, they didn't have a chance to, 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 to fulfill their life. But we don't know. God needed them more than we did, I think. Mm. You know, I'm not going to get into religion and shit like that. But I believe that, Heidi. You know, they're, they're angels. Bobby's an angel for us. Look, right. He he gave you he gave you strength to keep going. Life because easily you yeah. could have said fuck it and, and, and stop doing what you was doing. Yeah, because the pressure will kick that nigga's ass. Mm-hmm. But you know what? He gave you that arm to say fuck it. Let me go. Mm. And that's where you are. And I'm proud of you. And mm-hmm. I and I'm honored to be on your show, Chris. Or your gorgeous lady, my brother here. Sh- he don't say nothing, but he good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my brother ain't say. My brother ain't say. Uh, he, he, ain't, he ain't say nothing, but uh huh. <laughs> Money moans. Money moves. Hey, give him a mic and a beat, though. He'll say some shit. Nah, run the memories. We're here for you guys right here, too. You know. beat, beat. I just love sitting here hear you talk, brother, because, you know, with, with age comes experience and just, you know, scenarios that we can only wish we were a part of, but we love hearing them. It's like, man, sitting right here, here and you've been around just everything, bro. I mean, just mentioning the Radiotron, it's like, because I was a younger kid, I only heard about that. 
I listened to K-Day when I was 13. That's where I heard Dope Man, Easy E. That's where I heard yeah, yeah. N.W.A. And and you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, um, yeah, the bat, bat, what was it? The all the great shit. All that. Toddy T, Mixed Master Spade, R.I.P., yeah, yeah, yeah. the L.A. Dream Team. That's what I grew up in in eighth grade. And then I said, fuck, here's a station that is dope. Like, I, that Power 106 ain't playing this. Kiss FM ain't playing this. But this is an underground station. And, and remember, there weren't very many Latino artists yet. They were, there but weren't they, any. they were, but they were like, you know, I don't know if we were afraid to show our shit or, or you know, they didn't believe in it. So that's it. But little by little, I said, wait a minute, this dude could do it. I got better talent, not better talent, because nobody's better than anybody else. Yeah. It's a different type of talent. Right. A different style of thing. And then, and then, you know, like when you guys came up in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Yo, your, your niggas threw this shit for a loop. Now, but you're from the East Coast, mm -hmm. uh, uh, New York, right? I was, I'm from Puerto Rico, Puerto but raised in New York, but I lived, I moved to California when I was 12 years old. So but see, I, I know hip-hop, uh, obviously the birth of, you know, it, it, New York, York. Avenue, my, my, but, but there weren't mom. Latinos rapping there were. when there was you a were whole, growing up? Brother, that was all it was. Spanish the, Harlem. Spanish Harlem and the Bronx, the, the boogie. That's where, the, that's where B-Boys came from. B, the, 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 the terminology B-Boy came not because you're a, a, a boogie boy. Boogie, you're boogie boy. Boogie was the Bronx, the boogie down Bronx. Mm -hmm. So you're a B-boy. You're, B -boy. you're a boogie boy. Woo. You're a boogie boy. Damn. So instead of saying boogie boy, yo, that nigga's a B-boy. So they differ differentiated so, the, 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 the hips, the, 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 the when they call them breaks, the dancers from the Manhattan and Brooklyn to the guys from the Bronx who started the shit. Right. What were Latinos doing if you were growing up in Spanish Harlem? Were they, were they break dancing or you yeah, we were, were something break, else? We were breaking, dancing, uh, spinning. There's a lot of good spinners. Or rapping. Rapper, MC, rhyming. MC, MC, rhyming, 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 MC. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there was a lot of them, bro. So a lot of them disappeared. That was it's funny you mentioned that because the other day I was looking through some stuff, and there were some names I hadn't seen in years. If you ask me right now, I won't remember because it's, it's you know it's been a long time. Mm. But I was like, wow, I remember this motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, there was you know the break crews were big. You ever heard of uh, Air Force Crew? Of course. Uh, Lil Caesar Rivas. Lil Caesar. Yeah, he's my he was my trainer and back in high school. I and, used to. And then over here, where, where Bruno, uh, Papa Taco. They have a little studio. Well, Rest I don't in peace, Papa it. Taco. Yes, 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 sir. Time. And Pomona, they're, they're, I think, I believe they're still in Pomona, but it's been years that I've talked to him. But back in my days when I was all skinny and shit, you know. <laughs> um, a long, long, long time, time ago. ago. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Give my boys a beat, though. Nah, nah, nah. I'm on keto, I'm on keto. Nah, 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 nah. You ain't that big. Yo, y'all people can see, but he ain't that big compared to some of the people that are hanging around my area right now. Well, if you would have seen me before, you would have been like, damn, motherfucker. I'm trying to get that big dog. I can't. I used to wear Spider-Man suits, fool. I still do. I was a Spider-Man. Yeah, but you probably look good in that. Pause, pause. I missed this. That's fucked up. I was a stunt double, stunt double. <laughs> well, I also want, I also want to mention on that note, you know, we're bringing this thing about uh, Latino rappers and, and dancers and, and whatnot. It's not about just being Latino. It's basically, you know, we're all part of an industry. Whether you're an actor, a musician, a DJ, Speaker. a sport, uh, an athlete, a politician, we're all part of what you call now. I guess everything, even the t even fucking you know, a gamer. Everything's entertainment. We're all in that same circle, believe yep. it or not. And there was a time, especially in the, in the 90s, they were talking about, it goes back to, excuse me, reiterate about the Latino rappers and <coughs> rhymers that were, weren't as prominent back then because of the culture, the way shit was. You know, a lot of people, no, I'm not racist, it was geared or, or it was thought that it was just an African American thing. And it really wasn't. And it's all of us. Because if you think about it, the origins of, of hip hop, when in, in, in Spanish Harlem, the Bronx, and in, here in Los Angeles, it came from East Los Angeles, from Whittier, from fucking Southgate, from even from Compton and Watts. People forget there's a lot of Chicanos in Puerto, Puerto Ricans and Mexicans and fucking Cubans and whatever all up in Watts and, and, and you know, Inglewood and all that shit. So with, with that being said, not to cut you off, if Puerto Ricans were, were rapping back then mm -hmm. and it was a black art form, would they get criticized for that? No. Would they well, get checked for that? Like, no, well, hey, well, homie. Uh, nah, it wasn't like that. Like, I why you rapping? Why you rapping that? You know, black or why you? Nah, but here's the thing: when I came out here to California, you know, I was like, excuse my expression, and it's fucked up. I shouldn't use this word a lot, but we're my family. I said, my nigga, this my nigga that. I don't mean it that for him. When I first came to California, I said that I got checked by Mexicans and blacks. I'm like, 
fuck, nigga, what I say wrong? Yeah. You know what yeah. It's like saying homeboy or carnal. Over there. Over and there, it, right, okay. right. I mean, I knew white. Let me tell you, there's a shitload of badass white rappers in my in my neighborhood. The first white rap crew, well, not crew, but the first white MC, in, um, I can't remember his name right now. He was a little Italian dude. Mark, I can't remember his name. Boy, it was bad. Graffiti artists in New York. Half of them white. Dandy, Zephyr. You know, people don't realize it. And it's not white, black, Hispanic. It is what it is. Like I was a, it's like I said, we're all artists. So, you know, I get angry sometimes. I see these guys, you know, movie people that I've worked with, and musicians. You know, yeah, he's bad, but like I kiss your ass right now, and the time is like, yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. It's bullshit, man. Back in Hollywood, fake, fake. Yeah, there yeah, you go. yeah. There you go. And I know that you guys in the 90s went through a lot of shit because, you know, especially here in California, because, you know, it was geared, it was geared, you know, it was not geared, but it was more visualized that it was, you know, all in the inner city with the, with the African-Americans, and it really wasn't. And absolutely, and going back, it's kind of, it is similar to what, where we were brought up. It was blacks and Mexicans in mm -hmm. my neighborhood, sprinkled with a few whites, you know what exactly. I'm saying, here or there, and a couple of Asians here or there, depending on where you were at, what part of uh, the county you were at. But um, we all grew up on the same, you know, Fucking bean for the and you exactly. know whatever they you know we knew how to make a fucking meal you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying uh, but the music brought us together as well and we were all bumping the same shit during hip hop when it came through our when Lottie Dottie came through our oh. shit Slick Rick and fucking Dougie Lottie Fresh Daddy, bro we like to party we, we don't, don't cause trouble, trouble we, we don't, don't bother nobody, nobody. just Man. the men ah, shit. and we we could sing that shit in unison like we it was hip hop. At the end of the day, right? It was right. Seg segregated. That's and, what I was looking for. And I think the media is what really, you know, exposed that and whole that's fucking what I was trying to find Lati Chicano, rap, Latino yeah. rap, and shit. That, that's what I was trying. That's what I was trying to find when I was saying that, that it was, you know, like what do you call it? The seg segregation, and, and and it was geared. That was what I was not trying to get to. The geared. It was. It was. It was. Like told that okay, this is a predominantly black thing. You know, the, the hip hop comes from the, the ghetto neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that was our fucking way out. Not our way out. That's how we fucking really start stress. Right. You know, New York, we had the fire hydrants out. Over here, you guys have black parties. You know, uh, we had, had I, nice I, I hear house. where you're going through that. But remember when, like, okay, so the message came out, Grandmaster Flash, that was a jam right broken there. glass mm -hmm. everywhere. People pissing <laughs> on the stations that just don't care. But where were they talking about black or brown in that? It wasn't. It, wasn't. it was a message. Uh, right. It wasn't until, and I'm gonna bring this up, late '80s, where, and I don't call it segregation, but I just call it just. I don't know if we call it pigeonholing, but when like brand Nubians and Grand Puba and they were talking about Black I'm Proud and Black <laughs> This and Black That and they were wearing Public the medallions, Enemy. Public De La Enemy. Soul, like Zulu that, Nation. that conscious, you know. So we're like Latinos growing up at this time, we're still bumping it because these are, at this time there's no Latino artists and, and now and, and at that point, the minority that was a minority was a bigger majority than we, than we became the more minority in a sense. Mm. Like we, the, the Latinos were pushed down to the bottom for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, we weren't even, we were considered more minority now. And this is why I said with, with acting in show business too. There was a time where, like, with, and it resonates to what we're going back. I, I keep jumping in from one thing to another about, you know, oh, he's cool dude, but then, yeah, fuck him, you know? That <laughs> yeah, type of shit. Yeah, the yeah. Latinos yeah. have been doing that forever. Speak on, on it, TV, bro. On TV and shit. Oh, man, George Lopez, this. Fuck that. I'm, not, I'm just saying names, for example. Mm -hmm. um, we want some more Spanish or Latinos representing this, this, and that. Okay, cool. So then, even if it's a piece of shit, watch it. Support it. Yeah. Don't knock each other. Support. So at one point, the, the African Americans, said they, they stopped doing that shit to each other. And what they do? They became a strong power mm -hmm. in the industry, whether it was music, lawyers, uh, athletes. They bonded together. Yep. We tried doing that. And we had a certain amount of people that did it. But then in that, in that group, there was one or two fucked up motherfuckers that were like, you know, hypocritical and would turn around and talk shit. So how we unite each other if we don't fucking back each other up? About a week ago, and it goes with this story, about a week ago, Eddie Quintanilla was in the news. He was in San Antonio in the media. He was, like, lashing out. His, he was upset at his fans because, you know, they, they weren't giving him a warm welcome or whatever, and they ended up getting booed. And uh, so, you know, he lasted. What he said what he said and went on the next morning and apologized. And, and he said, uh, what did he say? How did he put it? He said, um, he goes, you know what, man? You got to understand, for years I've been getting shit just ever since Selena passed away and, and whoop de whoop But one thing that he said was, and then the the, the Selena Netflix movie, or I think there was a Selena the series, movie. The series, the series. The series. He says, you guys are are quick to jump. At, oh, she didn't play her right. Or she didn't this. I don't give a fuck. I just supported that. that again, on you know, the, the Latino. 
But as long as it's a great series, yeah. that's what I care about. Not only that. You know what I'm saying? We, we got our people working. Okay, so why did they say, oh, she didn't play the right? Because they're comparing her to the role that Jennifer did. So how do we know that Jennifer did a good job? Jennifer didn't know Selena. You know? Jennifer, oh, Je- active, Je- yeah. Jenny knew the family. I knew. I, I read for Chris. I was supposed to play Chris. Oh, originally. yeah? And a whole bunch of a change of guard went through. And shit happened. Chris and Navy and I were like this. And Susie. That's why Susie and I are still friends. The drummer. The sister. And I fought for that shit. I, I was, this was right after American. My hair was long. I had a hey, hey, low-key, Susie was really protective on. Su- Susie's very of protective. Of Selena. Very protective. Oh, my God. To this day. To this day. <laughs> to this day. <laughs> she would like, give us that look. I didn't even God talk for, to God forbid, Oh, yeah? God forbid yeah. you say And that Su- elevator story that I had with Selena. Oh, she gave us the third eye. Because, you know, Damn. her sister. That's what's up. top, beautiful. And she was just not. Yeah, Su- Susie was very protective. Susie's a very beautiful woman, too. Mm-hmm. She, oh, yeah. She, 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 bien fuerte. she got her balls hanging with her. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's one tough bitch. Okay. That's her daddy right there. <laughs> Reincarnated. Yeah. <laughs> but Abraham's, you know, he's older now. He's better. He's older. Yeah, I believe Abraham. Is. But anyway, no, the whole thing with the, 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 what you said about. Yeah, yeah go back. He'd be talking about, you know, uh, and he's right. Because I saw the pilot. I saw the very first show, the Selena one on Netflix. And I was like, hmm. You know, me as an actor, critical. Yeah. But I, I didn't give it that chance. I just saw the first five minutes. And then I said, okay, let me stop. Went, fucking smoked a joint, drank a beer. Took a piss, came out, put the shit on. I said, let me watch this right. Mm-hmm. I said, I didn't know that. I watched the whole fucking season. Nice. I based that whole shit in one night. The girl did a really good job. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, the only thing that I didn't agree with that the story is, yeah, it was made good with a lot of actors' work, but we already know the end of the story. Yep. To me, I think that was, it was it was more of, you know, a money-making thing for that network. More you something know? you didn't see in the movie, no? They're not really, because pretty much everything was there. Maybe like one or two little things. Mm. But if you look at it really well, it's the movie with, you know, a little more, you know, instead of, hey, Selena, how are you doing? Now it's, hey, Selena, you okay? How are you doing? The, a little more attitude, which was good. Don't get me wrong. I liked it. I think I thought it was great. But it was, you know, f- maybe it's, it was geared for the younger, the newer, younger generation. But I mean, even I, I run into little girls now because I do these meeting grades. They're like maybe nine, ten years old. Never knew who Selena was. The the, the 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 yeah, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the legacy, repre- the legacy, and the representation that she left behind for young women mm-hmm. is incredible. Yeah. Yes, it's incredible. It's in fucking incredible. Do you think J Lo took that shine? Hell no, she tried though. Because you know, a lot of little girls looked up to J Lo for years. Yep. I mean, they still do. Like J Lo could do a new hairdo. This to is her, fifty, to, you know. And to yeah, those girls, but, but you know, but, and I and I love Jenny right? and I love Jenny to death. I know her for many years, but she owes her career to Selena. Yeah, and that's my I, personal I, opinion. I agree. You said it, man. That's my he was personal around. Opinion. Honestly, I agree. That is my personal it. opinion. Give me a plaza. Give me a bomba. That, 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 that is my personal opinion. I love her to death, and, and I'll be honest. She did a hell of a job. She did. She did a really good job. She busted her ass in rehearsal. She literally fucking left her fucking mm. You know, she left she everything. Perfect. She left everything on the table and she busted her ass. I personally think she should have got nominated for at least a Golden Globe. Maybe, I don't know about Academy Award. Maybe two. Because she really put her whole fucking everything into that character. She embodied her very gracefully. Completely, completely. Yes. And not only that, she fucking studied her. Yes. And I get it. And that's why, like I said earlier, people, she, we don't know if she, you know, she didn't know, Je- she didn't know Selena. Nope. So nobody can say, oh, because she, 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 right, she right. Said, not only Jennifer, but that little girl. Oh, the younger, yeah. The, the, the girl, younger. Yeah. The one that played her in the, in the TV series. Right, mm-hmm. right. And then what time somebody compared her to acting like Jennifer in the movie. Hmm. Okay, that's what she had to go with because she didn't know Selena neither. Exactly. But she made it her own, mm-hmm. that, that young lady. I don't know her name. God for, for, forgive me, sweetheart. Who I, um. I'm bad. I should know this, but um, you know the face though. You if remember. you're watching this, I'm telling you, you did an awesome job. You should be proud of the work you did. That's all I can say. Um, Susie produced it. She did a good job with that. But like I said, you know, Jennifer holds a career. So Jennifer, you know, I've heard a lot of crazy shit lately. You know, you know how she changed. She's, I haven't seen her in a long time. She's getting a lot of bad press lately. That's what I've. That's what I've heard. I mean, yeah. I don't know. That's For what? Like, I didn't hear. Who, J-Lo? Being a bitch. But she, <laughs> she's she's active right now. She's about to go on tour, but she's kind of fucking with her fans. She's changing certain details, canceling dates. The prices are outrageous. Well, like. not only not only her concert shit, just her as an actress treating people on sets. Oh yeah, yeah. She's. I have a lot of. Sh- she's known to be. She's a turning diva. into Mariah. She's a diva. Yeah, she's known to be a diva. To even the littlest. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> the Puerto Rican, the New Yorkers coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, the flag is right there. <laughs> exactly, but the that's thing like is, you're yeah. from the Bronx. Hello. Don't put yourself in a house. green M M&M, and brown M and M's. They all the same fucking shit. At the end, they got a peanut. You like nuts? Take them nuts. <laughs> but you know that's her thing because she's still trying <laughs> to see my mom. Juanito said it. She's trying to she's trying to claim you know Jenny from the block you know she wants to hold that image. She was in the block when she was fifteen years old, fourteen years old. She even, went to, I got to the school with my sisters. She was privileged. She was privileged. Exactly. She's she, getting exposed. Like she I'm wasn't sorry, even Jenny, really from the know, block. I'm Jenny. I love you, but you know I ain't gonna talk. Yo, yo soy mentiroso. Yo digo hecho pecho, hecho hecho parante como elefante. So that's the thing. Everyone's like, you're not relatable. You're like, See, you're a diva that shit, now. That shit pisses me off. But I heard she. And I heard but she's trying to hold on to that shit. No, I heard this shit recently from a young girl too, who's uh, well, no. I, you, a friend of mine was had a small role in, in a film that she's doing now, and you're not allowed to look at her. Yeah, exactly. Who the fuck are you? You ain't she, fucking Virgin Mary, bitch. She, Back she, the fuck up. She takes tips back. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. You, 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 you want, yo, oh, you wanted a real fucking life, motherfucker? Ooh. She's cheap. I was like, am I, are we going to get in trouble You can't this? look at her? You can't, no. you can't make eye contact, bro. She's, it's, she's not comfortable with that. Who? She just, you know. Christina Serrano? God bless you, Christina. I just met this young girl, too, uh, that, that does her, uh, Chris, um, Amanda Solis. Okay. So, oh, my God, this girl is awesome. Okay. She, she's doing it. She does a tour. She's, she's, she, if you hear and see her, that's the spin image. Oh, the music. Yes, yes. Oh, she performed at Long Beach, right? Yeah. yeah. But here's the thing. But here's oh, yeah, that girl right can there. sing. Right. Oh, she go. could really sing. You know, she's done shit. She does the Selena stuff, the but then she's done some of her songs. Woo, that girl can sing. She got some pipes. Yeah. She's badass. Right on. So, you know, okay, so Jenny, I'm tired of talking about your ass. Yeah, you know, yeah. Eat them green M&Ms. You know, the peanuts are good. It's yeah. the same shit. Peanuts, <laughs> peanuts, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? What do you think about, like, since we're talking about artists who, like, do cover songs and whatnot, but, like, you said she's got the original song that the girl we're talking about. Well, yeah, so Lisa, uh, uh, um, I, I mean, a lot of these artists I, I'm, I'm seeing in the industry, I, I, they do like you know covers, covers, covers. I'm like, we want to hear original shit though. You have a beautiful voice. And, and here's the same thing that you say. And they with it's music, like, movies today. You look at the movies. There's no everything's a remake. No originality. Yep. It's a remake. Who wants to see fucking uh, Fast and the Furious 45? <laughs> How many motherfuckers <laughs> gonna die before you say okay, DUI is in kind of speed? You know, shit like that. Right. They're remaking something. I just saw. Um, no, and they remade Chips into a movie. Yeah, you were on Chips, right? I did, I did two episodes of Chips. When oh, I did 21 Jump Street, on. when they did 21 Jump Street in the movie, call it something else. The movie was good. It was funny. But they want to ride off that clout, though, off, off those coattails. Like covers. Or, no, 21 Jump Street was good. Chips was trash. But like you said, really? cover music. You're right. There's a lot of... If you have that talent, then you know you can sing. Maybe they're afraid of rejection. Because, you know, our business, you're going to get a lot of no's before you get the messes. You yeah. know that as a musician. Right. Record labels, actors, models, DJs, you're going to get a lot of shit. And that's why one of the advice that I give young people, I used to tell my daughter, my daughter was a dancer and, and uh, she wanted to be an actress. I said, Mom, you don't want to do this shit. I said, if you really want to do it and you really think you, then be ready to get your feelings hurt a lot. Right. To, to fucking eat cheeseburgers without the burger, right. just the cheese and the bread right. at times. Because... It's not going to be, especially being, a, 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 you know, ethnic cultures. Right. You know, now things have changed a little bit, hopefully, for yeah. the better. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And there's a difference with between getting hated on in comments and mm. getting hated on at a show. That's the shit. When you get booed, that's not, no, that's in your face. And here's the shit, bro. You got to that point where you can get on that stage. You shouldn't have to be booed, brother. Right. Then, then you did something wrong to get that boo. And what's going to happen? That notoriety that you had as an artist is going to diminish. Ain't nobody going to want to go see you play. Ain't nobody going to want to see your movie. Yeah. You know, I'll be honest with you. I lost. Man, I, should, I don't know if I should say this. Fuck it, man. We, this is freedom of speech. It's the Blockout Podcast, <laughs> baby. Let's I lost go. All, I lost all fucking respect for Will Smith when he fucking smacked, when he fucking clock rock like that. I mm. mean. Bitch slapped him for one. For two, he's bigger. He's a bully. For three, he did it in the worst platform that any man could do. He somebody said he put niggerdom, he put the nigger back into niggerdom. And I don't mean it that way. Right. He threw the black people back to what corporate Hollywood in America said, that's why they, we don't do this for you. You're on the they, widest platform there the is. The Oscars, motherfucker. Mm. <laughs> the Academy Awards, the most the, that that's the holy grail. That's like going to that's like going to church and you meet the, the, the pope. I mean the the monsignor, but then you go to the Vatican and you get to meet the pope and you tell the pope, "Oh, your pope, excuse me, fuck it, I gotta go take a piss." 
<laughs> yeah. Why don't do that shit? Quote. You know? And what? For a joke? So you can't be a comedian now? And from that moment on, I, and I think Will Smith's a decent actor. See, these deranged women will. You took the words out of my mouth. Like that. He was laughing his ass off. Uh, Jada was like, She was laughing his ass off. She said, you go to him, don't tell me like that, bitch. Yeah. Then he said, then he said huh. there it is. And remember, he just got done like, with Tori. She with Tory Lanez. We exactly. don't allegedly. Oh, so, come know. on, man. I'm sure in my You're wife. Hearing all this, this. She's going. telling him, she's telling him I'm fucking sucking somebody else's shit. And he just said, you look like G.I. Jane. There was nothing wrong with that. It wasn't that she bad. She said, G.I. look better than her. What the fuck? <laughs> she should have taken that as a compliment. I mean, Jada Pickett fine as fuck. I don't know. You wrong I'm there, just saying man. that. I'm, she I'm fine. not saying she's she fine. But there was no reason for her to react that way. True. Supposedly she was tired of it because Chris Rock's ragged on her before. and she's Yeah, but they're friends. The They've shit. been friends forever. Exactly. Yeah, They've yeah. They've been homeboys forever. Yeah. You exactly. Don't think so that's probably why she thought What she like, did was she, why she wanted to see fucking Will's, Will's man game was up on, on point. I mean, yeah. she could have. Man up, bitch. Him. Handle this motherfucker. Yeah. Of course. What, I bet you if it, was, if it was The Rock that said something like that, Will Smith wouldn't have got up. Yeah. I mean... Oh, Come on, he went and fucked yeah, up Pookie. He went and fucked up Pookie from fucking New Jack City. I mean, ah, he, smack you for another joke. But that's why too, he, he probably knew that he wouldn't retaliate, right? Yeah, it wouldn't. But you see, and here's the difference with the, with right. class and unclass. Yep. You're and he won the Oscar, and I'm exactly. glad they took it away from him. He's banned for ten years. Right. He should. Wow. They should take the whole Oscar away. It don't matter. He's still gonna work. But it took him while. What did Chris Rock do? I got this. The you, show must go on. Yep. You know that as an artist. Yeah. You can sit there and fuck up three or four or five lyrics or be yeah. fucked up and never remember. Look how many they artists fall on stage and get back up. Or exactly. they fall off he stage. riffed off and it. And don't get back Leg up. And everything. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, man. But anyway, I'm not going to yeah. talk no more nigga shit about none of you people. Any, anybody else you can think of I can fuck with? <laughs> you hey. might get some shit for that, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Who else got to talk shit about? No, it's no. as real as it gets right here. Let me, let me go fast and furious on this. <laughs> ah, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> this, is a pro- this is a personal thing between my boys over here. Have <laughs> 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 you know your shit pushed in? <laughs> what point did Boy you? What point did you? <laughs> what time? What point did you decide to become an actor? Because I know you you're talking about you were breaking. Were you acting well, going no, to I, classes? I, I, at I, that breaking time? was a side. Because I know your dad had a big influence on yeah, you. Yeah, breaking was a side thing. That was my little fucking so, shit. I, I was acting way before. Like, I, I started acting when I was five years old. You're doing a Sesame Seed joint. Sesame Street, Sesame yeah. Seed. I said, I'm hungry, motherfucker. <laughs> Sesame Street. You're join Jenny with the peanuts. Uh, <laughs> Jenny who? Jenny from the block. Oh, they said 69. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, my dad the was... Pe- a- <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Peanuts and Jenny. The, pe- the M&M peanuts. You know, she clip she only wanted the green ones. Hey, that's right. She don't yeah. like the browns and yellow ones no more. Ooh. Her rider. Ooh. Only green. She's the United Colors of Benetton. I'm good. Anyway, um, no, my dad was already, um, he was, he, he was, my dad was one of the first original character actors in, in Hollywood and in New York. He, did a he lot was of in stage. Scarface, right? He was in Scarface. He did a movie called Carlitos Way, of course. Him and Al Pacino have been, wow. him and Al Pacino have been friends since I was born, since 1963. Um, so they've known each other for years. He did, actually did the original um, off-Broadway play of West Side Story. And then we were I, just I talking you. about that. I told you. He goes, I auditioned for it. I go, well, that shit came on the set. He goes, no, Dick. <laughs> School play was having an idea. But that shit was tired, bro. You it wrong because it didn't come out in the 70s. The original came out in the 50 something. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. The, the movie Rita Moreno. Oh, yeah. Anyway, he. he, he, he you got, are old, motherfucker. Go not ahead. me, motherfucker. Nah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. He sees they me. They always tell me that shit when I remember. And I'm shit. the one drinking Moreno. <laughs> <laughs> what you drinking, dog? Nicola Bolcher, but that's yeah, Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I got him <laughs> fucked up. So, anyway. um... He was doing this independent movie in Spanish, no budget. And I'll be honest, you know, he had people from the hood, you know, um, financing it. When I say that, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Dirty dirty money, you know. Yeah. So they did this movie, and one of his production guys was a um, a unit production manager for Sesame Street at the time. Sesame Street had only been on the first year, wasn't even finished yet, in 1971. And they wanted to change the format. And at that point, what they wanted to do was bring a... Um, they realized that there was a lot of Hispanic children in New York, in the tri-state mm-hmm. area in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, where Sesame Street was geared. Sesame Street became bigger later in other states and shit, mm-hmm. but it was basically, the, well, PBS. Right. So um, they brought, the guy says, yo, they're looking for, this, you know, they're trying to do this, blah, blah, blah. So I said, but you should try out for this. Because I did, a, I had a little part of my father's movie, I guess. I don't mm-hmm. I guess I, yeah. I guess I was good. I don't fucking know. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was a cute little guy. Yeah. You know, I, 
<laughs> shit happens, and then you know you get older. <laughs> sure. Anyway, um, I went apparently I auditioned for the part, and because like, you could have been picked, there was probably a million Latino little kids there, and you were the one that were picked, and you were hand picked, right? He, for, I was hand picked, and it helped that your dad was in the movie too, right? right? But my dad had nothing to do with it. My dad had the only thing my dad had to do with it was that that you know he knew the production people, but I had to go audition for the big boys. Oh, I so I auditioned you. at the end. It was like a thousand kids. At the end, it was maybe like a hundred, and then down, down to twenty, and, the, and then it was just me and one other kid. Did the kids find out that that, that was your dad? No, uh, he's only know, here they, because no, they his know dad. Because my dad had nothing to do with Sesame okay, Street. Okay, got you. He had nothing to do. The only thing he had to do was that his friend was the one that told him about the thing. Mm -hmm. All right. And the guy had no. He had no fucking. You know, so like a referral. Then. Right. He had no no say in me getting the part or not. For sure. So, turns out that I wound up getting the part, and it was just a, it wasn't just one of the ki the regular kids on the street. He was a character. I was the first Latino, the first only child actor, on top of being Latino, yeah. to be credited as an actor on Sesame Street. I taught kids how to say uno, dos, tres, and one, two, three in English by the time I was five years old, six years old. Let's go, homie! Yeah. And my father, I played my father, Raul Julia, God bless his soul, who was played Gomez Adams in the, in the Adams Family movies. Sure. A legend. So your, your so dad, it, your dad and, and Gomez, the guy who played Gomez... Had a lot to do with you getting credited, right? No, that that was just because it was actually a character. He wasn't just a kid. It was I, okay. You're my father on the show, right? Yeah. And you say, hey, okay, my name is Pingolete. Pingolete, go that way. That says, you know, my character. I had lines. I I had I had. I was a main actor basically as oh, a yeah. kid. I was the only main actor, the only child main actor to this day. So who was the one that credited to get you in the it credits? Says my name, Sesame Street. Because they knew it was a, it was a character. They, the, Antonio Latin was my name oh, in the show. Same. What Latin my play name, name was Antonio. Okay. So Raul Julia's name was uh, Luis. My father, Luis, Raul Julia, Antonio, Panchito Gomez. And that's it. And then the rest of the, the, the adults. So shout outs to Sesame Street yeah, for recognizing out. Amen. Latinos. And it's crazy in, because I just, screen. Found out, I just found out to this day, I've, the only one that has ever, no child actor has ever had a role, a character on Sesame Street. Nice. They've had little guest spots, but nobody's had a character. You've never seen one Latino or one black kid be a regular or a white kid be a regular on that show every day. Man. So I'm proud of that. You know? and, and actually, right now, there's only two surviving cast members of the original cast, which is myself. God, please keep me here for longer. And the lady who played Maria, uh, Sonia Manzana. She's in her late 70s, early 80s now, too. But um, I spoke. I saw her not too long ago. She looks just as beautiful. Mm. I'm gonna cry mm. thinking about her now. Okay. Yeah, but um. Trailblazers. Yeah, man. It was funny. It was funny. And, and then the oh process, dang. You know, I went on. You know, I um, ended up getting an agent. I did a bunch of commercials. Uh, I did my first feature film. I was casted in New York, and the movie was being filmed in Colombia, South America. Is and, that Sonia uh, right there? That's Sonia. That's Sonia Masana right there. Ah, God bless you, baby. Man. Beautiful I grew lady. up watching that. Yeah. Oh, no shit. That's and you crazy. know what? She remembers me. She has pictures. There's pictures of me and her still on Muppet Wiki that I just found out. I was like, wow. You know, a there's a lot of crazy, I don't, I don't have too many Remember memories of Sesame Street, Never but I have it. some, you know? I was going to say, yeah, you were so young. You said you were five when I you was started. five and a half. So how do you even harken back to those times? Because, like they, you know, as a kid, I was, we were just talking about something. Sometimes, you know, people don't... My brothers and sisters are a little bit... My two sisters, my, my youngest sister, my little brother, obviously younger... There's a lot of things that they don't remember, mm -hmm. and they should, that happen with us in, in our lives. And I come back, and they're like, I don't fucking remember that. I go, I don't know. Maybe it's a gift. Maybe God, that's God's, you know, way of, of, of keeping me humble, maybe. I don't know. Yep. Or or, or, or not even humble, but remind you, hey, remember this, bro? You know, you're my brother. And then you're, the, my little brother's like, wow, okay, yeah. Yeah, you remembering know? where you've been. Yeah. But do you remember being on the set? Like, I remember one time. I remember one time, and... And I read, and it, uh, there was a scene with Oscar the Grouch, who's my favorite. <laughs> I was scared of Big Bird. Hell yeah! <laughs> I remember being scared I would of Big be Bird. Too, I remember being scared of Big Bird, especially when they took the thing off. Oh shit! And it was a lady inside. It was Jim Henson's wife. Oh and wow! Damn. And, 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 and inside the, inside the thing, there was a little camera like this, right? So she could see when she was walking. Nice. And her hand was up here. Big, hey, Big Bird, whatever the fuck. <laughs> when they took that shit off, I shit my pants. Honestly, like, what? <laughs> well, you're a kid. Yeah, yeah, that's a mind fuck. But then I go back where Oscar was. And for some reason, I used to like that garbage can. I grew up in Spanish Harlem. There were garbage cans everywhere. Yeah. That's why I first learned how to play drums. And he was on a stool. But garbage cans oh, and shit. Now that's a garbage can with chopsticks and shit. You take, you know, right now you give me two chopsticks, I make sounds out of this shit. That's right. So as a kid, I used to listen to the size of it. So when the, when the garbage can was there, I was like, I was never like, <laughs> yeah. And then fucking around during rehearsal, I, I, I'll never forget this. That was one of the only good memories. The, the Big Bird thing all happened the same day. Mm -hmm. The Big Bird thing scared me. So I went to the garbage can area. <laughs> 
And and Jim Henson comes out. He knew I was scared. His wife, oh, you keep the kid. I was like, and I didn't want to keep out. And th then Oscar pops out. And he comes up my name. Hey, Antonio. My name Panchito. He goes, hey, Antonio. I said, I know your name is Panchito. I was like, oh, shit, this guy's real. No lie. Sick. Oscar became my first friend. Wow. Oh, my God. Said, my wife. There it is. Like, <laughs> Damn. 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 Damn, nigga. Oscar to the rescue. <laughs> What's CTW? 72. Damn. Children's Television Workshop. Got it. That's yep. that was promo. a network. Promo. Children's Television Workshop. Sunny that days. was previous. That After that came Zoom. Not Zoom. Um, Electric Company with Morgan Freeman and Rita Moreno. And um, that's why I met Morgan, too, when I was a kid, because they, they used to pop in and out from Sesame Street, a lot of these actors. Three, right? That's wild. Season two. Season two. Okay. It's supposed to be season... On the, on the Wiki, season three. They, 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 see, I remember shit they don't. They wiki whack. They wiki whack. <laughs> <laughs> wiki, 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 wiki whack. whack. <laughs> no, well, you know what's funny? I tried to get some of them episodes, but, and um, they could. it's hard to find. And I said, well, how hard is it to find if you see the things? It says Antonio's in the cast. It's so early on, though. Well, not only that, they they don't have they have it they have all this shit in a vault. And back yeah. then, no, no. If you ever notice, there's no reruns on Sesame Street whatsoever, ever to this day. Didn't know you'll that. Never, you'll never see any rerun on Sesame Street because it's uh -oh. all every day. So that that first season was like 100 something episodes made. Mm -hmm. You think about it, a season back then, 365 days a year. Season's like 12 weeks per show. So you're talking 100 like 150 shows in Man. one season. So for them to go through all that and they're in a vault and they transfer from film to TV, I mean, from whatever to DVD. Real to some Yeah, shit. I'm pretty sure they've already done that. So then he goes, that's costing, but I said, I don't give a fuck. I'll buy the whole fucking thing. Yeah. He said, like $8,000. I said, no, you keep it. Yeah. I said, oh, I, I watched the real one. She goes, that's why I said, I watched the real one. She goes, oh, no, you won't because they won't be around. Let me ask you, Someone's got did it. you know the level of, of, of fame that, that Sesame Street was at when you joined not at all. You're only five. You're only six. You it don't. was the first, the second season. Nobody knew what Sesame Street was about. Oh shit! Oh, yeah. nobody it knew. It was, nobody it wasn't even popular. And, and you know what? And, I, and and that's another problem moment in my, in my career and in my life. I'm part of history in the sense that um, that's the most iconic, most educational, most institutional yeah. programs on television yes. to this day. Nothing ever, not even National National Geographic, yeah. has the 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 the, the the accolades that Sesame Street has had. Yep. No, oh. they're doing things with LGBT. They're doing things with autistic children now. You know, it's, they had Elmo. You have the, you know, Bert and Ernie came out of the closet. Come on. Yeah. Now. You know? It's, it's grown throughout the years for sure. And, and, and you're yeah. right. You're and part of education. history. And, and I'm... The, it spun off Sonia. in different languages, no? Huh? Plaza it spun Sesamo. off in different languages. Yeah, I was in everywhere. Yeah. We, we, we went I remember to, that. We went to Spain <laughs> to do Plaza Sesamo. Yep. <laughs> and it was because that of us. Was sh it was because like... Of because of Sonia. Telemundo? Or Univision? Univision did it, yeah. but Plaza Sesamo, Plaza Sesamo for because Sonia Masara. I remember the song. Uh, Raul Julia and me. Sing it, fool. <laughs> Plaza <laughs> Sesamo. Yeah. 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 We, we took that. We took that Make to a Spain. beat already. <laughs> so then we went to Spain <laughs> and to, to shoot in Spain and in Mexico in Spanish to teach the Spanish kids English. Wow. Yep. And over here we did this English to teach the, no wait, opposite, to teach the Spanish kids here English Whatever you know what I'm saying, something like English yeah, yeah. and Spanish. So, so, so the so, so Spanish kids in, in Latin America would understand uno, dos, tres, lapis, gallina, chicken, pollito, hen, wow. mm -hmm. lapis, pluma, or some shit like that. It was a long time ago, but you know, that's, that's so dope. You know, and it's funny because I didn't know that until later. I'm like, wow. So you were educating on English television, man. Uh huh. Back then. without even knowing what I was doing, without even knowing you were doing. repping, but it was without even knowing what I was doing, bro. Can you believe that shit? That's crazy. And it's funny, I think about it now, wow. I remember this, you know, it came up a couple of years ago, I was in Puerto Rico, and this lady is a fan of mine, and I've known the lady for a long time, she's like a family friend member, or whatever, and then she told me, you know what, I was, she's about my age, a little bit younger, because I remember when we were here in Puerto Rico, we were all proud of you, and you know, you taught me how to, you taught me how to read English. Wow. I said, what? I remember, not, I, go, I told you, how to read. You, 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 you fucking older than me, how the fuck I teach you? <laughs> and she was, no, because when I was a kid, we didn't, you know, we weren't learning English in Puerto Rico. They, they, Puerto Rico started teaching kids English in school in the 74, 73, 74, because of Sesame Street. Oh, wow. shit. So that's why 99.9% .9 of, today Puerto Rico is pretty much all English. When I was a kid, we were in Puerto Rico. To find a kid that spoke English good, was very difficult. And over here in the 80s, they, they didn't want you to speak uh, Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, yeah. It was. There we go. What, what is that called? <clears throat> Can we say racism? 
<laughs> or, or you know, hold 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 the person down. Yeah, until they started seeing the numbers in these corporate. Oh and, shit, and Latinos man. are buying and, you. They started hiring all the Latinos well, because they needed that, to we, go we, to we, Chile, we, Brazil. They needed to go all these places. The population. Puerto Rico. My mom went to. Yeah, she worked Where, in laboratories <laughs> for the uh, hospital. Like she made uh, medical supplies. And they needed her. Yeah, that's they told the her same, she went from not don't speak Spanish to speak Spanish. Was, yes. it, was it the same thing? And, 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 um, that's yes, was, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, 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 Edwards Laboratory, all American Edwards exactly, Laboratory. I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, Ain't that a bitch? She, uh, the air in the bitch. You see, shout out to moms. What's that's up, what's mom? mom? Speaking I of mom, speaking of mom's mommy, I know you're gonna see this later. Te quiero mucho. Vete para el hospital, no jodas más. Estás aquí. Esta. Vete para el hospital, yo voy para Nueva York next week, so watch yourself, girl. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. I want to shout out really quick to my boy Battle Rabbit, who's with me and his beautiful family. Thank you for holding me down here in L.A. for now. And then, of course, if I don't say this, I will be mad at myself. I just, um, like I told you, I lost my wife five years ago, and it's been a rough path. And I've just been the happiest man in the last three months. I met this beautiful lady. Mm. And it's given me a lot of support. Vanessa, if you're watching, I know you are. Mm -hmm. I'm about to cry right now, but thank you for... Making me happy again. Brother. The love is real. I'm just going to shake your hand and also yeah, tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. Watch out for those Vanessas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Wow, that's your wife's name? Yeah. Vanessa! Vanessa! She's probably right here. The whole thing. Yeah, Vanessa. Anyway, if, if anything that, 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 with that Vanessa happens to you, me, <laughs> yeah, then I'll be happy. That's right. Because you're a happy motherfucker. I can Absolutely, see it. man. It's a good but, sign right yes, there. Yes, sir. Happy man, happy wife. Man. Man, happy wife, happy life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you already know. Now man. I say I'm wifing up yet. So, shh. Relax, That's right. Relax, girl. Relax. <laughs> but, but you're happy, bro. But, but you're close enough because you're already, you know, you're already on TV. And, you know, you, I didn't see your last name. I'm not going to go. <laughs> now watch every Vanessa coming to me. you talking to me? I don't know any other Vanessa, but anyway. Um, and you also lost your your pop your pops a couple years ago, I lost, my father, too, I lost right? my father a few years ago, and I lost my, my big brother, who's an 11-time world champion. I don't know if you knew that. No. Talk about it. Who? Hector Macho Camacho. That's your who? Macho's my half-brother. I lost him. I lost him. Yeah, Hector, Macho Camacho, fool, back in the day. So it's funny because I'm Camacho, no, the boxer. The boxer. The boxer. It's funny because you mentioned that, um, this this month coming up. Um, my brother in law is taking me. I've never been on a cruise, right? Before my wife got sick, we were planning a cruise. Neither had she gone on the cruise, and unfortunately, we never got a chance to do it because her diagnosis went within a year and a half. The cancer ate her up. So my brother in law calls me a couple of days ago. No, but. No, bullshit, but four months ago. That's my brother right there. Macho time. Hey. What yeah. time is it? Macho Sorry. time. That is so bizarre, my man. My big brother, my That's big brother. He got brother. murdered in Puerto Rico in 2012. Wow. So check this out. So my brother tells me, he says, yo, um, you got a passport? I said, yeah, yeah why? okay. Don't make any plans for me, Baba. I said, what? We're going on a cruise. I go, what the fuck you mean we're going on a cruise? Well, he knows what I've been going through and, you know, I've been you know, by myself. Blah, blah. He got me this cruise. We're going May 10th. And here's the thing. My wife's birth my father's birthday was May 16th. Passed away two years ago. My wife's birthday is May 17th. Passed away four years ago. Mm. My brother's birthday is May 24th. Passed away 12, 13 years ago. All three of their birthdays in the same month, the same, within the same week. Damn. So every year, I don't fuck with nobody. I stay home. Or I go to my mother's house, go to the cemetery and pray. He said, you're coming out, and we're going to celebrate all three of the motherfuckers' birthdays. Hell yeah. yeah. I said, that's what's up. As you that's should. What's up. That's what's up. Shout out to the yeah. May baby. I was kidding, but I think, I, think, I think he actually has ulterior motive. I think he wants to off me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I think he put a, like, a fucking life insurance thing on me. I told my sister, I go, why the fuck every time I go with him somewhere, he want to take me somewhere dangerous? <laughs> he shows me this racetrack on the top of the fucking ship. <laughs> and I said, he goes, we getting on that book. Nigga, what if that shit falls off the track? I'm going to go flying into... Nigga, I'll be like... Hey, look a little closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last time he took me, we went to Hawaii, put me on a helicopter with no fucking door. <laughs> he took me shark diving with no cage. I'm like, bitch, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you went shark diving? Yeah, yeah bitch, I was shark, shark diving. Yeah, what right? was that experience like? <laughs> Scary as fuck. I bet. I mean, I, I've been in Hawaii. I lived in Hawaii for many years. I'd go, I, I like snorkeling shit, but this was too close for comfort. Yeah, what part of Hawaii? Hey, Oahu. No shit, the main island. Hawaii in the main island. No, yeah. main, I went to, um, I lived in Macau for like a year and a half. Macau Beach, and then um, it's on the other side of the North Shore. Okay. Yeah, so, uh -huh. but I love it. But when we ended up there, man, I looked at him, and then I, he's a big dude. And he got in the water. He got out real quick. I said, oh, okay, I see how this rolls. So you throw me in as bait, bitch. <laughs> so, so when they eat me, you still got time to run, you big fat fuck. <laughs> 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 no, but um, yeah, so 
Yeah, I'm for, I've been fortunate, man. You know, and I've met a lot of great people in my life. My career's been good. God's been good. And yeah. We'll see what happens from here. I'm producing a movie right now. Talk uh, about uh, it. It's in the, well, we call it No Budget, Low Budget. It's <laughs> called The Higher Power that we talked to you about. Yeah, 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 I yeah. Got my, I got my little good friend. Um, I was going to ask you, has that came out yet? So no, it's still no, in we, we, we have, like, we're still in production. Like I said, it's been rough with the No right. Budget. And, the, and, and, and beside the fact that I live in Florida, and kind of come back and forth between Florida and L.A., it's been a little crazy, but um, um, the the brains behind the one well, of the brains behind it, the story behind it comes from a young cat named, <coughs> excuse me, goes by the real Mr. Homicide. Yeah. Young cat, hungry, he's good. I, I you know I read the the synopsis. I jumped in as a producer as well with, with um Angel Salazar, Chichi from Scarface, mm-hmm. and um and Pete Chavo, Pete Vasquez who played Chivo in Blood and Blood Out. So we we maybe like we have like maybe another twenty percent of it left to shoot. And little by little, but hopefully now I'm, I'm here for a couple more days. We'll get a couple of things done, and then I come back. I want to say the end of May. Yeah, for like another week or two, we'll shoot something. But um, is it a is it a funding thing? Why it's taking so long? Uh, or funding it creative thing, or just funding a, thing for one time? You know, the timing of, of certain people. Everybody's you know, schedules. So I I want to I just want to tell you right now, nigga, you down? For what? Let you little roll in my movie. Man, quit playing. Hold on. Let me show you my good side. <laughs> they all, all good. good side. Learn your lines. Yeah, yeah but, but 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 the only thing I could pay you with is either food stamps or fucking Jeez. government government cheese. <laughs> government cheese, food stamps, or fucking modelo. Oh no, wait, but make a little ultra light. Excuse <laughs> me. Just put me a, I just want a comedy line, bro. I want to be a comedy role. Uh, you gonna play a dirty cop? Ah, shit. Yeah. Damn yeah. it. You know, What's up, homie? Hey, I still play the cow. Look at his career. I'll be dope. You want the sick one liner? The sick one liner. Yeah, what was my liner? It was the sick one liner. <laughs> line? Hold on, let me. <laughs> Just one of those. Not that line, cabrón. I don't want M&M. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want, I don't want chocolate M&M peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't look at me, punchy dude. Don't look at me. Have a nice. But yeah, so, so it's, almost yeah. A, it's almost done, you know, it's a little thing. Ride um, me in that bitch. Let's go. But aside from that, you know, aside from that, aside from that, we're going to talk because there's other things you can help me with as well. Yeah. And I know that. Homicide, I want, I want Homicide to come in one day and, and, and rap with us. If you yeah, like. yeah. There's a young welcome. coming through. Yeah. So you hear that, Homicide, you coming through, man. ODM wants to see your ass, punk. Bro, I got a list of people that you know that I'm trying to get. We'll, we'll get on the pod. We already that, talked man, about Man, yo, this imagine stuff. we fucking, I bring all these motherfuckers, we throw one big ass party in here. Oh, Shit. bro. To the Shit. reunion. Live streaming. All, all, all we need is a pair of congas here, some music. And fucking some weed and no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah. In the backyard. I, 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 don't, I don't partake, I just smoke. We got a hundred foot land cable, so we're good. <laughs> I don't inhale. <laughs> I don't inhale, never did. I like yeah. his vision though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come here, we'll throw a nice little fucking jet. That would be awesome. You know that podcast like that with just a bunch of random motherfuckers? Yeah, it would be dope. Oh my god, that's so organic sick. as fuck. Just like one of those like 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 um like that we are the world shit. Everybody mm. just popped in this bitch. All these cameos. That was a fucking. Did you see that shit? I love the that documentary. Shit. I, I saw some of it. I didn't see the whole thing. Yeah, that, that was, was crazy, interesting right? to see how it was just the night after the same night of the Grammys. Yeah, and he pulled them all. Was, he and pulled, everybody was just rolling. He put all the monsters out, and they yeah. were until like five in the morning recording that shit. Yeah. People yeah. motherfuckers were just falling out. Nah, that People was some good cocaine on the yeah. set. Yeah. Yeah. There was, yeah. was some good cocaine back in the seventies and eighties. That's what yeah. the fuck it was. Yeah. Go yeah. watch that shit. You have it. Yeah. Even Ray Charles was like, "Yeah, we are the world." Fucking Ray Charles, we are the We are the children. No, it's lit. Why you not going to hell for that one? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Yo, Ray did a movie. He man. said Stevie was looking for the Where that? Where that? Fuck. Your dick. Dion Wall. Hey, we're in the cancel culture. You can't talk Steve like this too. right now, guys. Dion Wall would call Cleo and Cleo said, You're on your own, bitch. <laughs> hey, we're a real ass podcast. Oh, that shit we don't are. apply to us. But we yeah. just got out of the YouTube Mapinta, homie. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, huh? shit. Yeah. My bad. My it's bad. My bad. bad. Nah, we JK. good. We I think we, we went off the fucking radar on this, didn't we? Nah, we straight. Nah, it's just man. dope. We straight. We, I came here to do a really nice fucking interview about my career, and all of a sudden this shit turned into a fucking comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> nah, this and is fun. It is. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun, man. Let me tell you, I didn't, I, this is the last thing I expected. Robert, man, you, you're my dog, bro. Chris was fine as hell, and that perfume she went on. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ. You, I can't say much because you ain't said shit yet. <laughs> Shit. Nigga speak, say something, bro. Yeah, well, you, yeah. just, you just go on and on and on, dog. You don't stop. Well, shit, and that's what I'm. Uh, that's because I retired from Coke 20 years ago. <laughs>
Yeah. That's just not your fucking. Oh my god! Shit, see, you're still on it, fool. I've been on it for. I did coke one time for forty years, and I still feel it. <laughs> <laughs> He's still chasing that first Shit. one. No, no, it, it's a drip. No I'm kidding. <laughs> the drip, <laughs> folks. folks I used to just, call it clouds in the sky. In my folks, book, I'm just my kidding. I, I fuck around. I'm just. I'm. I'm normally hyper. Let's go. You're a jokester. We like that. It's all good. You I know got. What? I, I, like I said earlier, I feel happy now. So I let loose sometimes, and I haven't felt like this. And this is even better because I'm being myself, and yeah. I hope you guys don't mind. That, well, that's because you're comfortable, chill. bro. Yeah, yeah. Come on, and, and I feel like, you know, now, you know, I'm at a point in my life where, you know, all the sad shit that I've gone through, and, you know, a lot of people. Here's the thing. You're a musician. You go, you gone through shit. You went through it with, with, Rob, with Bobby. Yeah. People, oh, man, Papa, you got to put on this front sometimes. That, you know, okay, I'm good. But deep down inside, that shit hurts, man. You know what hits me and the most never is, stop hurting. Is, is family. Yeah. My That's kids. Mm -hmm. If I, if you sit here and act, see, yeah, it hits you right there. You start because you know what you went through. To oh, I know what I went through. You know what I'm saying? Before I could, and and just with and my daughter, she we didn't almost my last daughter. She almost just wasn't here. You know, right, one right. of those things. So I hear you talk about your your you know your ex wife. You know, rest in peace. Your Thank dad, you. rest in peace. And and I've seen you like you you know I get it, bro. Like you you feel the emotions, and only people that have gone through that know. You know, you know, but everybody, like you said, has a has a past. Yeah. And 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 the older you get, that shit just fucking comes back and hits you. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it was something you were younger. You know, like we all have these memories, yeah, it, whether it, it, good or bad. You and, know and what I'm it, saying? And it hits you harder when you get older. No, it hits you, but, 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 but yeah, it hits you harder, but you analyze it better. Because back then, you know, you, yeah. you see it, but you you go with that moment, you go with the flow of what's going on. Yeah. But you don't realize what's going on. And then a few years later, like you said, you get better. Say, Oh shit, that's why that happened. Yeah, like I was paying two fifty dollars a gallon of gas. Mm. Now I'm paying fucking five dollars, motherfucker. That shit hurts. Come to Florida, niggas only three twenty five. Damn, we go to Arizona. That shit three twenty five. I was in battle. I was in battle rapid truck the other day. Twenty nine. That nigga said, "I said, is it moving?" He goes, "No." I said, "Damn, how much more?" He goes, "Keep going, dog." Damn. Four hundred dollars later, I said, "Is it moving yet?" He goes, "Almost." No. Yeah. What do you got? That's how he's expensive. Like a diesel. Oh, but he puts shit, the premium. Bro. He puts oh, the man. premium. No, I got man, a, yeah. I got a diesel, bro. I have that fucking. I mean, that's just. Yeah, but the guys out here are crazy, bro. Yeah. Six dollars. Five, five, yeah, five, six bucks. Yeah. Oh, shit, fuck homeless. You be fucking driverless in this. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Shit. In Texas, it was like two ninety, dog. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, but that's not bad. Yeah, it's cheap. The, my, my home in Tampa, the cheap is about two ninety, three. It, it fluctuates between two, between almost three to like three ten, three fifteen. Yeah. And even then, I'm like, God damn, I ain't putting the gas today. I'll wait till tomorrow is a penny less. No, <laughs> I'm an unemployed actor, so you know. I'm trying to save every penny to finish my movie. You okay. ain't unemployed. Okay. True okay. artist. You're working on a banger right I'm, now. I'm hopefully, go, go, from your mouth to God's ears, it's gonna be a really good project. Yeah. You know, like you know, when you guys are in the studio, perfection is one thing that not too many people realize that bothers us. You know, we have to make shit just the way you know. People say, "Oh no, that sounds good." No, fuck you. It sounds good to you, but I don't like it that way. Let me, oh, I need this one little pitch more. One little high volume, you know, throw that bass out just a little bit more. Right. That, to make it just how you want it. And I think those are genuinely people who care about their music. Because there's some, some motherfuckers out in the studio right now, they just putting the shit out just to put it out. And it's like, it's just a different day and age. They're a different day and time. That, that's all I'm going to say. Like, if you could fucking be consecutive with that and the shit just sound fire, because there's some artists that can. You right. know what I mean? Right, because, because that's already set the way they want it. True. You know, you already know exactly how you want your shit. So, right. You know, you have that same team. You have that same crew. Right. So by having that, that's your policy. That, that, that you ain't got shit to worry about. Just go in there. That shit's already mixed the way you want. Okay, this I want to trouble this one. Bah, bah, bah. That's already done that way. But then there's artists like Picasso. Like he, he was never happy with his fucking paintings. I'm never happy with my work. He was very. You I'm know the what I'm saying? Like, Perfectionism. I'm, 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 I mean, Perfection I'm, hits me hard. I don't judge bro. my work because I don't really watch a lot of my shit. I watch once or twice here and there. Yeah. And then I'm like, because I know myself. I'm very critical of shit. Yeah. You know, and that's when my yep. wife used to get mad at me because I, I, even not just myself, like my friends or something, like I would watch the way I go, you see that? that she goes, shut the fuck up. You got to criticize everything. Go, she goes, that explains why you can't finish your movies. Yeah. Like all my songs and my or my script. Oh, gotcha. I'm not on time. She goes, that explains why it takes you so long to finish something. I go, I go what do you mean? She goes, because you got to criticize everything. I go, yeah, because that's yeah. how I see it. That Like right now, I'm looking at this shit. Yeah. My look cool. yeah. I like the way my eye looks. Right. That, that kind of shit. You, you know? always find something that yeah. uh. procrastination does it is a like a I want to say like a byproduct of perfectionism because you put it off till last minute because it's like fuck. I already know like I'm not gonna you know, like I'm afraid that I'm not gonna hit that standard. Exactly. Your own standard. Mm -hmm. 
And it kind of it kind of gets you scared. Right? And you at the end of the day, we drop a fucking, we think it's a fucking banger. Yeah, this is the one. <laughs> Why? Because I spent 30 hours. Okay, cool. Put that shit out, and then don't do shit. Yeah. But though, on the one you recorded last week that took you five minutes, <laughs> that's the one that fucking blows <laughs> up. Hell yeah. yeah. And then you go, damn. Because it happens because, all the time. Because the more, the more head you put into it, the, the more you're fucking with it. Yeah, yeah, you're fucking yeah, shit yeah, up. Yeah, it ain't broke, don't says, fix oh, it. That's what she's doing. Just that, leave that the shit alone. It sounds good. I'm like, all right, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Organic, yeah, authentic. Yeah, drummer, bro, I'll sit there. You know, drummers, you we make whatever the fuck we want up. You know, <laughs> yep. it's not like it's not like a, like a guitar player or, or a pianist or a DJ. Well, DJs are like drummers because you, you can find that, yep. that beat. You beat. know where the fuck to go. You know, you, with drummers, we freestyle our shit sometimes. Mm -hmm. I remember one time this guy, I went to, it was, I think it was in high school. Band teacher took band. Fuck it. I said, okay, you have to learn paradiddles and you give me notes. I go, well, what the fuck? I'm a notes for what? Yeah. A, B, 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 C, then fuck you, bitch. Pa, 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 pa. You play by ear. Boy, I got kicked out. I got an F in band. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck gets kicked out of Who the fuck gets kicked out of band in ninth grade? A sick ass artist. Well, was, yeah. A true artist, honestly, because well, you I can't wind, follow I, that. I ended up running into him 10 years later. That's Ooh. true. And I was playing with, um, with um, what's his name? Hilberto Santa Rosa, a uh, salsa star. In Puerto Rico, and um, it was in New York, and it was a place called um, what the fuck? Latin Quarters. And the guy showed up. It was funny because he was he was a Mexican dude, Mexican Cuban, an older guy. He was teaching. This was in California, in ninth grade. I was in high school at Burbank, and I wound up running into him at this fucking thing. And I'm looking at him about oh, that because he was weird looking, right? So you know, you never forget a weird looking motherfucker. <laughs> and plus, I hated the bitch because he fucking fell, threw me out of band class and failed. Mm -hmm. You know. Yep. So I remembered, and he comes up to me, hey, man, you remember me? Oh, yeah. He goes, good work up there. I go, yeah, that's when I was learning music. I told him. Yeah. And he goes, wow. I go, how you doing? How's your career? He goes, oh, no, you know, I'm not teaching anymore. I, go, I wonder why. Damn. Dude, Same. I love that I felt feeling. bad, but, you know, shit. But the thing is, you already had the ear for it, and I agree that you have to learn conventional before you can get experimental in whatever your craft is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you already have, you, you seem the to have natural. an accelerated mm -hmm. ear mm -hmm. or yep. some shit, so you're like, you can't. You're not trying to learn the basics or right. like, you know what I mean? Like you can't follow that uh, that uniform because it's like, right. nah, yeah, I want to. Like, like I wanna you, you guys, could, you could come up with a hook quicker in, 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 in with one beat than I could, you know, with 40 beats in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Well, when I do tracks now, it's funny because I I, I play by ear and, mm -hmm. and I'd rather do that. I've, I've never read a note in my life. And I you think see? that's just and something that's natural that a lot of us are gifted at, mm -hmm. and, you know, and we... Yeah, bro. I couldn't. I, now, I wish I knew notes. True, true. Just I'm so I, it can help me, like you said. Classic. Facts, facts, yeah, facts. Classic. And, and, but, uh, but, but sometimes, let me tell you, that shit could fuck you up later. I mean, really? I took an acting class one time you know, again in college at, at, at the Cal State Northridge. I took a, another acting class, a theater arts class. And I went in and sat in, and I'm not going to lie, I've been acting since I was five years old. I personally think you can't teach me how to act. I may be the shittiest actor in the world, but you can't teach me what I already know what comes natural out of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are people that you have to teach, that you can take that that teaching. Yeah. I, can, I can't. Yeah. Because that'll completely throw me off of what I've already known or what I know. Same with my like, natural ability. Same with Spanish classes. Mm hmm Like, how does, you know, we grow up a certain way, and then you go take a Spanish class, and I know a lot of my homies- Happened to you too? fucking failed. You have to Happened I never took it. Yo, I never had I to. speak good Spanish. I, I, I guess now I'm older, I can speak it. Proper if I want to, but my Spanish, I grew up in Puerto Rico, Spanish. It's the proper. The so you tell me in Spanish, and, and my Spanish is, pues, Francisco, lee me esto. And yeah. Says, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I pick up the book, mm. and it says, let's say it says, um, Carlos está en la tienda. Y yeah, viene yeah. Mañana. Carlos está en la tienda y viene mañana. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that's what I say. I say, Carlos está en la tienda y viene mañana. So, mm. Carlos está en la tienda. Carlos no está en la tienda. <laughs> you have to. Get out. Did learn, you ever take Spanish class? Yeah, I did in high school, and my it sister, sucked. My sister was in my class. She was laughing. She, they kicked me out, and then after yeah. she didn't speak so Spanish. You guys the same came thing. from the same household, so you guys are using the same slang, yeah, but you, you got too? docked for that. Yeah, thing. I got docked for my slang. You had to learn everything proper, and it's like you have to unlearn, you know, the, the shit that you already grew up learning, like you said. And I get it, but it's the same fucking language. We're saying the same thing. Except we're not fucking pronouncing the R. But it's not, like you said, proper. That's mm -hmm. how they, in their eyes. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a trip. But I, now I hear what you're saying, man. It's like with the music thing. It's like with anything. Acting, like you said, mm -hmm. you know one way. This is my way. And I think that sets you apart from, you know, everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Man. You know, you're you natural, your brother. Flavor. And, I, and I'm not knocking actors. I know a lot of guys are method actors. I can't do it. You know, you 
get deep into that. I can get into my character. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's my job. You say action, I'm that character. You say cut, I'm not that motherfucker no more. That's tight. You know, <laughs> you know it's a trip when I saw you, because I, I was like, they told me you were in Mi Vida Loca, and mm-hmm. I was like, where? And then I had to go fucking <laughs> back and look at the movie, because I watched it several times. I was hiding out in that movie. Bro, and yeah. then, like, but you were the homie that was in the back of the truck. Joker bird. And then you went to the fucking, uh, you're the one that's, you walked into the party where, where El Duran was. Mm-hmm. And then the homie at the the security tried to check you, and he was like, "You got a problem?" And, and we had a like, fight for real. We fought for yeah, real. Yeah, I got a fucking problem. And then Arthur was here. Shout out to Arthur, man. Yeah, Shadow. Arthur. Shadow. He What's said, up, my brother? Shadow. He said that he was behind you, and he actually fucking got pushed. Me and the dude fought. That shit was real. Did he tell you me home before? Like in real life? Yeah, I mean, I do why in the fucking fist fighting. Because of that scene. That scene. That, that she shot that scene. Do you don't see it well? On the floor, I'm fucking him up. Wait, that was like real. The actor when he pushed me. Yeah, he was a stunt man, and we had that rehearsal twice. But he, he had this attitude. I don't know. He, I guess you know. Oh, okay, I, so I there was, was already animosity him. before okay. then. So when he came up, if you if you watch that movie, you see a smirk in my face. That wasn't acting. That was like, bitch, fuck with me again. No, ah. you you look pissed, that, bro. Yeah, he grabbed the cigarette, threw that shit down. Because I knew what he was gonna do. Yeah, I got a fucking problem. In, in my face. Uh, so when he did that shit, he pushed. I said, pow. I said, fuck it. Walk out. Jesse Burger said, fuck. I said, keep going, keep shooting, keep shooting. So they shot. That's when little Sleepy picks up the gun. When they when he picks up the gun, they cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. had to reshoot that because we were fucking scrambled. So <laughs> like, That's yo, crazy. And all the girls from the cast, I don't know if, if they Vero told you, Vero wasn't in that scene, but it was Baby Doll, yeah. Jesse. She said uh, Selma Hayek was uh, all drunk. Or she, she, let me correct it. She got drunk for the scene. Why you, why you looking at me like that? Dad. What? Selma Hayek was drinking just to drink or what? Not for the character. Hey, okay. give me a piece though for Selma Hayek. Oh, we got to, let, let me just bring, bring me another that. one too. Just for Sama Sama Hai, Sama Hai back me up. Let's just say that. Hey, much love to Sama. What do you mean? Sama, she was ready to squab too or what? Sama, Sama was my girl, bro. We were down. That's what's up. Huh? Sama and I became really, really good friends. She was. She just came from Mexico. Nobody knew who she, she was. She was green on that set, yeah. right? She was bad. She had not attitude. People didn't like her. Not the girls of the movies. Celosas? Yeah, well, she not. We, we, there were three of us at a time in the dressing room in the, in, because of makeup and hair. There were so many of us. So my crew was a little sleepy. So, can I have one too, if you don't mind, sir? Salma, yeah. myself, and Little Sleepy, right? No, go ahead. You go. You no, no, no. You're my guest. Well, shit, this is your house, nigga. That's okay. <laughs> I got to respect. I got to respect the house. Okay. So anyway, we were every morning, every night, fucking between six in the morning, or six at night to eight in the morning. I'm oh, sorry, six at eight, eight, six at night to eight in the morning. We were being makeup and all that shit. So we became really good friends. To say to say no more. Yeah. And um, when that shit popped off, she was the first one that said, "Wait a minute, stop, stop." Aww. She went and kicked that dude. Yo, I fucked that dude. Uh, <laughs> no shit. So I she she up. felt his vibe too. Then yeah, everybody. You still t- you know where that guy's at today? I have no clue. And I'm good. if I see him again, I'll fuck him up again. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. No. Sick ass Homer Simpson. Beer. Eruption at the ODM show. I gotta <laughs> let you guys clip me slurping this. Hold on. <laughs> All foamy. <laughs> Make it real. <laughs> you gotta chug it. All foamy. <laughs> I let it suck down. How um how no, was it back then um. Like getting these castings for these films, was at it like through time, an agency or like did you get hit up? At or? that time, I was I was working so much that it was just coming a lot of them, you know. But it, there were times where you know shit, you got to go through that whole audition process, right? And, you know what they call not a cattle call because I was at a certain level as an actor that you didn't have to go and meet with like let's say all of us are reading for something right now. You just a room full of actors. I was at the at that level where there was only four or five of us that were doing the table read. Right. Not even the table, we go straight to the producers and directors. Oh, Everybody sure. has to go through the casting director first. Mm-hmm. They're like a protocol shit. Right. Mm-hmm. When I was at one of those, at that point, where even before that, those movies, where I didn't have to go through that bullshit. You weren't like ha- in the waiting room. You had the juice. Right. There was, there was a handful of us. Line. And when I say a handful of us, I'll tell you those names again. It was myself, a guy named Ramon Franco. Isa Morales? Isa came later. Benicio was around. Benicio del Toro. Oscar winning Puerto Rican actor. Um, yep. Uh, Saiso, what the fuck? The usual suspect. He did that thing with um, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Depp. Was it um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? Yep. Mm. He played classic. The, yeah, he's we, Benicio's a weird dude. He's a great actor. He's a weird motherfucker. But yeah. <laughs> but it was a handful. It was um, Jimmy Smith. It was Jimmy. Jimmy it was Jimmy. Yes, Isai was there. It was Isai. It was myself, Ramon Franco, Isa Morales, uh, Michael De Lorenzo, Jimmy Smith, and a guy named David Labiosa and Israel Harvey. It was six of us that were like you know. At the top of our game. Is this the reason why, and that kind of, maybe you can confirm this. Is this the reason why, like, you see the same 
La Chicano or Latino actors. And from the 80s and 90s back then? Or, or just even to this, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a handful. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's a handful of black actors right. that yeah. always yeah, get. Yeah, you always see the, like the same like, black like, actors example, in the Tyler Perry movies. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or, or Think yeah. Like a Man. Like, right. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, like I had a, had a, competition. I think yeah. for the culture, yeah. it would be like Michael Pena. Right. Um, now, now you got Michael Pena. So they get the front of the line audition pass then. Well, not even now no more. They don't need to go through that shit. They don't need you know, to go through. We it. open the doors for the motherfuckers because they already know what you yeah. can do. Yeah. We open because of they what we what, put them in what there. Jimmy, well, Jimmy Smith came later, and I, my, the big props I'll give to would be myself, Ramon Franco, and Isa Morales because of us three motherfuckers. All these niggas today have it easy. Mm-hmm. Even John Leguizamo, we open the doors for them guys, Damn. and I'm a humble dude. I just said it because you know what? I got to give props to my brothers who busted ass and paid the dues. Now, out of those three that I'm talking about. The only ones that's actually really broke broke out is Isai, and God bless him. But you know what? He's a great actor. We all paid our dues. And I'm glad, you know, I've done my share of work. I'm happy with what I've done. I've never wanted to be a star and don't want to be a star. As long as I make you believe that I'm that person in this movie and you come up to me and say, yo, man, thank you for that, that tells me that I did my job. Right. The fame, okay, what's in the house? Cool. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll juice my juice if I have to. I don't. Yeah. The money, of course, we all want the money. But I'm not a greedy motherfucker neither. Yeah, I could be. I could. I could live with a million dollars or another. I could live with ten dollars. Mm-hmm. You ever got screwed over on a, on a like a roll? Oh yeah, like money wise. Yeah, and they tried to. I turned a lot of. Movies, I turned two movies down because of that shit, and then they ended up fucking me. Well, one of them was Selena. When 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 I, when I was do, when I was gonna do Chris. Mm. When when before when Warner Brothers took over, from the original studio, they cleaned house. Damn. One of us did not want me to play Chris. They already had who they wanted, which was Jacob. Mm. And God bless Jacob. Did a great, not Jacob, I'm sorry, John Seda. John mm-hmm. Seda, yeah. And John, see, all those guys. They who, came, John was also in that movie, uh, uh, I Like It Like That. Yeah, that was his first big breakout, him and Lisa Vidal. Yeah. Two of my babies. That was her, her big break, too, because mm-hmm. then she got on that. She's done all kinds of shit. Mo- uh, cop, cop, uh, yeah, yeah, her, uh, with, the, with, with Nancy McKeon. Yeah. I, yeah. And I'm sorry, I don't watch too much TV, but, but I remember. It's been a long time since I watched TV. TV's changed, man. Yeah. yeah. TV's changed. But anyway... Um, yeah, I, I, what was it? Oh, yeah, with the Selena thing. And I was watching Entertainment Tonight, and I knew Je- me and Jennifer had rehearsed and blah, 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 and it was all good, you know. And I'm thinking, all right, shit, I'm going to get this part. Abraham wanted me, Chris and I became really good friends. I learned how to play guitar. Well, not to play, play, but I, you know, I learned the basic shit to make me look like I was playing because yeah. Chris did all this stuff. And it, excuse me. So I'm you got hated on them, and it well, not only me, it wasn't hated. They they cleaned house. They knew already who they wanted and what they wanted to do. Gotcha. And they wanted to save money on the budget, so to speak. Yeah, which was bullshit. So they eliminated like four of us up for different things. They took us all out. It was like a a, a manager coming into a new baseball team <laughs> right. and they just swipe the team out. And they right, bring right. the players. You keep, you keep the you keep the you know yeah. you keep the, the 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 big the big guys that could do, it, but the guys that keep that team alive gotta go. Mm-hmm. Right, you know right. the, the the fucking the, the the co-stars, so to speak. Just like radio, same yes. shit. Yeah, yeah. A program director comes in, wipes mm-hmm. out all the talent. Yeah, and brings in his shit. Yeah, yeah. and that shit is shit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Facts. I, I I feel I sense a little animosity over there. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Hey. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just no, but you, it's true. We've all tasted the radio chain. And let me tell you, you know? with, with that whole thing with Selena, it pissed me off, and I call it almost. I was, what, that's what it was. I was watching entertainment tonight. Uh, just you know, added on to uh, the movie, the biopic of the movie, the, the singer uh, Selena Catania, aside from Jennifer Lopez, um, was the little girl, like, um, Rebecca Lee Mesa, who played young babysitter, and Edward James Olmos. When I saw, it, I said, I was so pissed. That scene, I called I said, Eddie. What's up? He goes, Hey, Pachito, how are you? I go, Yo, this is bullshit. Goes, what happened? He goes, You know what happened? He goes, yeah, I know. He goes, Don't worry, I take care of this. That's what I had to say. Mm. He goes, Just hang tight. We'll take care of this. Two days later, I get a call from him and Abraham Quintana in a three-way conversation. It wasn't even like the phones we have now. They wrote those three characters in. The young the young Dino? Yeah, 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 the Dino. Abraham made sure they wrote that shit for me and Richard Coca and, and George. George came in later. Richard Coca was the kid that played Mundo in American Me. Mm-hmm. But he was supposed to play jo- uh, John Ojeda. Mm-hmm. And they brought another actor in. So almost made sure that we both got back into that movie. And what they were going to pay us for, for originally... And they got fucked because he wanted to paint us twice that amount for less time. That's right. Damn. The less I work, the more I That's make. That's right. Yeah, I, yo, but we worked like, don't lie, we worked like five months on it from on and off. So if AB, AB's the one that looked out for you when it came to that. No, the real Abraham, the father. The real. The oh, father. gotcha. The father and Edward Olmos. Hmm. And Edward James Olmos. Yeah. 
Chris, Chris was like, I said, he was, man, Chris was mad. Chris was like, dude, he was like, hey, dude, I don't know what the fuck happened, dude. It was just some bullshit. I said, Chris, don't worry about it. He goes, no, man, that's fucked up. I wish I could say something. I, goes, I wish I could say something. I'm talking just like, I said, don't got to say nothing. Don't worry. Goes, no, but that, dude, that's fucked up. I said, don't worry about it. So when he called, when I called him a couple of days later, I said, I'm back. He goes, fucker, I told you. I go, I, I, I had to say something. I go, you lying bitch. You didn't say shit. Ah. He goes, I was just testing you. We had fun though, man. But you know, like I said, we, we shot like maybe on and off for like five, well, we were on three, maybe four and a half months. The three of us. If you watch the movie, you only on like five minutes. Yeah. Was was Abraham at the set, the, the father? The father, he was there all the time. All the time. All the time. That. Making sure shit was mm-hmm. just running. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But once again, you're part of history. That's fucking dope. You know, it's funny. Now you see, I, I, sometimes you don't, I don't even realize that. This is the first time yeah. I heard that. First time I heard <laughs> that. Thank you. No, you are, brother. That's the first time. I mean, as far as you talking about Selena. Mm-hmm. That's the first time I heard it. Thank you. I mean, um, on multiple accounts, you know, Sesame yeah. Street, Selena, you will you Thank you, thank you, thank you. You got a resume full of Same. history. Damn, y'all gonna uh, make me cry. No, resume okay. full of trailblazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put him on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> in, in your eyes, in your mind, what's your biggest role? That meant the most something notori- to you. The most no- 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 notorious role, would be, I would say, would be American Me because of the the... the the impact that that movie had, and then and, and just the movie itself, especially with the Latino culture. Right. But my favorite, favorite role was a guy named Hector Ruiz on a show called Hill Street Blues. Mm. I had that character for five years. I, 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 I brought him in from 15 years old till I was 22. You grew up with him. I, I made that kid. I mean, I mean I, he was a thug, was, but he was a sensitive little gangster. He was a kid, you know? And it got to the point where in the in the pilot, well, how the theme song go? And what kind of one you say? No, man, stick to rapping, bro. <laughs> 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 that's not it. That's it. No, that's fucking <laughs> <laughs> That's bash, nigga. <laughs> oh yeah, you right. <laughs> <laughs> this is warm up home. They all say no, no. you know they had the same composer no. for all the fucking eighty no, shows. No, no, this was Mike Post. So it was ding 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 ding. He's so right. So, you know it's all uh, we're doing pianos because that's all that was yeah, in those days. You know, just pianos. Piano. And, and Mike posted all you're right, Mike posted all the music for the, the White Shadow. Uh Ooh. Uh, oh, was it a St. Elsewhere, oh, Hill Street Blues, that's Mary right. Tyler Moore Show, because that's all the MTM. That was all that same company. Damn. That's what fun. a great era to grow up and watch. And it was fun, And man. I watched all the... I didn't watch Hill Street Blues. It was a little older for me. Um, Hill Street Blues is actually a groundbreaking... What, yeah. what every cop show you see now on TV yeah. and from, from NYPD started because of Hill Street Blues. What, so we broke the mold. Chips? Chips was just a bullshit you know, TV. Yeah. I like Chips. That Chips was, was good. No, favorite, I, no, I like, Chips was not a hardcore cop show. Right. Oh, when I'm talking hardcore, I'm talking like Law and Order, NYPD Blue. Oh, I got you. Hill Street Blue started that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Chips was a great show. Chips yeah. was, you know, more, you know, mom and pop type. I've never even into those. That's probably why I wasn't into Chips, those I did three episodes shows. with Chips. That was fun, too. <laughs> I watch Cops, though, all the time. That shit look real. Well, where do you think Cops came from? Hill Street Blues. Yeah. That show Cops was derived through Hill Street Blues. I'm saying you had your mark Because if you watch Cops, <laughs> if you watch Cops, well, then again, Law and Order. Was it Law and Order? Or NYP, New York Undercover. Oh shit! That came out of all of that shit. Motherfucker, you and Barney Miller and That's fucking, fucking Simon and Simon, eighties, Cagney and Lacey. Another, the, that's another 80s. crime. Those are uh, those are eighties, baby. I was all over the place, man. Yeah, that's bro. Wild. I was all over. Pretty much a lot of T.J. Hooker, a lot of those T.J. shows. T.J. Hooker. As soon as they were written, they're pretty much written for me. I didn't know that. I found out later, and I felt bad because some of my actor friends would go. I would walk into an audition to be like this. And I'm talking about the bigger guys, right? They're like, oh shit, Ponzi, let's go. You, you, you uh, know who's Let's all go. Yeah. And one thing they embarrassed me like that. He summarized said, All right, guys, just so you know, everybody can leave because, you know, homeboy's mm-hmm. here. He's no Holimo. We got to start with another month. Right. Yeah. We get another part. He goes, let's go, go, let's go to the next, what was it? Let's go to our next audition before he gets there. For <laughs> real. <laughs> Yo, I felt so bad. I was like, damn, they were fucking with me, though. But you was on top of your game. Yeah, but they we all were. were. We all were. But, you know, it was just, they you were know, wrong. we all were at the time. You know, it was just flavor of the month sometimes. But the thing was, I was fortunate because my dad, you know, taught me a lot, and all the actors that I worked with in my whole career, yeah, taught me how to not be a dick, not be egotistical, not right. be not be a fucking asshole to other actors, and to watch what I do and learn your craft. I learned my craft, and I tell kids this: learn your craft. You want to be an actor? Go take a theater class in school and do stage work. Yeah, I love the yep. stage. Stage is where you fucking you know everybody says, "Oh, stage is hard." It's hard because you know what. The thing with stage, you only got that one time to do it right. Right. And you have to project. Yep. 
So on TV, you could do that movie, you could just cut. Now you probably you could talk like this, mother. You got a mic on the stage. You gotta really fucking put you know get put all your balls out in that bitch. Yep. You know. Plays. So that's why I tell these kids today, or even not even kids, people, younger, older guys that come up to me, say, I want to do. I said, do stage, man. <laughs> yeah. Learn Perfect your, your skills. Perfect, Perfect your skills. Hone your hone your skills, and, and, and love your craft. Don't do it because you want to be famous. Because you want. Yeah, that's cool. But if you like what you're doing. You know, that's well, it. What about the shows that were live studio audiences? Different Strokes was one of those. That was fun. Those, those see, those you were are, in Different Strokes. Yeah, the Different wow, Strokes. I did Barney favorite, Miller. Man. I did a series called uh, Fish. There was a spinoff of Barney Miller. Damn. And I, I had a, rec- I had a recurring. Todd one. Bridges really have a uh, drug problem? If that was real, because I don't know what's real or not. No, Todd, sure. Todd, Todd, and I have, to this day were very, very good friends. We came up at the same time. We did. That's the. Uh, and then he came back and he clapped on America after that. Like I'm back, motherfucker. Fucking Chris, Chris Rock hooked him up, bro. When everybody loves Chris, yeah. Chris Rock gave him a chance again. Hell yeah. Because Hollywood wouldn't do it. But mm-hmm. on the other, on the upside of that it was another friend of mine, Robert Downey. Crack kid, crazy yeah, motherfucker, yeah. winds up winning an Oscar the next Another month. turnaround, yeah. Another Oscar. But Hollywood gave him that chance. They didn't so, give it to God. They didn't give it to me. If it was me, they wouldn't give me that chance. You know, it, it works like that sometimes, huh? Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's fucked up. Yeah. And it's fucked up. Well, yes. were, you, were you around these parties? Like, not part, not even parties. Bro. I'm going to say parties. My just, crew just, in the just, 80s, if I tell you my crew in the 80s, we ran them parties. In we, L.A. Let's say it was know, the it, 80s. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to throw some names at you. Stoney Jackson. Todd Bridges. Oh. Michael T. Williams and uh, Bubba Shrimp or Bubba Gump or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Robert Townsend. Myself. Oh, Robert shit. Townsend. What was Robert Townsend's about? He claimed that, that funny ass movie. Uh, ain't uh, gonna, I'm, I'm not, I ain't gonna get you, sucker. Um, yeah, come on. No, Keenan, and um, they were trying to be in, he was he was a movie writer and and uh Yeah, with the with the sister. And Winky Dinky Dog and fucking uh, that. <laughs> come to Winky Dinky Dog. <laughs> Damn, uh, I can't remember the name of that shit. Yeah. But that was like Hollywood a, Shuffle. Hollywood Shuffle. That's what it was. <coughs> there, was a comedian, there was a, a, a young Hispanic comedian, Jesse Aragon. That was my crew. Was Philip McKean from Alice. Um, Wait, where did, where did Philip play? Who did he play? Philip McKean? In Alice. He, he played the kid. He was Tommy. Oh, was okay. I didn't know there was a kid in Alice. Yeah. I, I remember Mel. Mel was a... Uh, Mel's, Mel's, Mel's diner. Yeah, he right, And then Alice had Miss her Miss Garrett was a fucking... No, kiss that, my grits. Yeah. No, that's Flo. That was somebody... Polly, Polly, Polly Burger. That is Flo. Yeah. But the kid, Alice's son. Got kid, it. Well, his sister was Philip, um, Nancy McGee. So at the time, she was going out with Michael Fox. <laughs> Michael so J. Fox? Michael J. Fox. Woo! So shit. that was our little crew, right? And we would fucking go to these clubs for, uh, what the fuck, by the Beverly Center. And mind you, four or five black, Miguel Nunez, four or five black dudes, the only Puerto Rican dude, only Hispanic, fuck Puerto Rican. Oh, my god. The only Latino. I was a pretty boy. She, I was couple years. I was slanging everything yeah. and everybody. Yeah. Just getting all the honey. And it was all of us. And we were fucking, yo, bro. Until Mario Lopez came out, and then you, you were done. Yeah. <laughs> he, said, he said it, Mario. Schneider. What's his name? Slater? He Snyder? said it, Slater. Dan Schneider? Said it. I said Slater. Schneider. What does he do now? AC Slater? Yeah. AC Slater, there yeah. you go. Yeah. You've seen it, you've seen it, you've seen it. Yeah. Well, I thought, hey. What is that about? <laughs> I, I fuck with you. I look at him, I go, I need to work out. I got no excuse. That nigga's 90 years old, he look good. <laughs> they say black don't crack, but I don't know what they say. Like, you know, Mario Lopez got Mario secrets. Da- Vato looking flaco. I don't know. Vato looking flaco. He still got fucking black hair. What's up with that? <laughs> Just for man, Carmen. But um, bless you. Yeah, but we used to, those, those. We used to. Man, that's what I want to hear we about. The, the, we had. We had. Like who was you Jerry hanging Buss. out with? Like what other actors? You Jerry Buss, the owner of the Lakers. Remember, God bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Jerry used to love it, and he had a whole row of it for us. At the, at the, when we were used to, at the at the fucking forum. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. So you used to go to Laker games, then. <laughs> nigga. Every fucking what? game. Every whole game. Every whole game. Did you every... see the series, the Lakers series that was on? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I started watching Prime Time or something like that. Showtime. Season two. Showtime's coming out. I gotta watch. I didn't finish watching. That was I thought that shit is true. I remember when Magic, when Magic Johnson came to the Mag- Lakers. I used to party with Magic. All of us. But it was like you know you had all these bigger stars. Uh, you party with Magic. Bro, we, there was a place called Carlos and Charlie's on Sunset. Le Dome on Sunset. Uh, fucking the Roxy, the uh, the the Palladium or no more. Palladium was down that way, more. Yeah. The Palace, more, the Palace. I used to run to the Palace all the time, but that was more of a hip hop. Right. Okay. Not hip hop, but the dance music type shit. But this is still uh, clubbing in Hollywood in the eighties, though. Yeah. Like, but but damn. The, the, the Sunset yeah. Boulevard shit. We, we were like the only fucking. Ethnic motherfuckers that rap What about shit? Drew Barrymore? Did you part of her? No, I never did. I never did. <laughs> that was like my cr- I, 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 crushes. Me too, me too. And Alyssa Milano. She, there were two babies for me, bro. That was nice. Oh, was it? 
Was now, it? Now, now you want to talk? Uh, Who's the boss? I, I go, yeah, she, she was a kid with that. Oh, okay. I, I was already in my twenties. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. I'm just growing up watching <laughs> these. You know. Now, now you talk about fucking Dana Plato. God bless her soul. You talk about fucking um, uh, what's her name? Um, Punky Brewster. That's too young. So Way we moved, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm naming all my know. crushes right now. Hey, but oh, Drew Barrymore was partying when she was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Well, Drew Barrymore yeah, was Yeah, right. She went through five. some shit, too, right? She was yeah. like a five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Blossom. Oh, Joey Lawrence. Yeah, you're, you're I know. I, I hung out with him, but he used to, again, he was in the younger crowd than us. Yeah. They used to look up to us. Alfonso Ribeiro, all them kids. Yeah. From, they used to Damn. look up to us. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, yeah, cool. But again... So you're from. I was, I was an Hispanic right. kid driving. So you party with a girl from Romper Room. <laughs> 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 I see Panchito. I see Robert. Hey, right, right. You oh know what I'm saying? No. Blues, Blues Clues. Blues Clues. clues. Damn, let's go. Yeah, I, I, I was fucking around with Dora the Explorer. Dope. Her mother, though. Shit. No, okay. Oh, <laughs> nah, but you know, we had a crew. Like said, Don't tell we, me you hit the lady from New School Review. See, that's cool. I don't Woo. even know what the fuck that is. It's the new school review. Yo, this nigga. <laughs> Come <laughs> on, dude. They had the owl. They had the froggy. Uh, the, the fucking I don't frog. Remember that Kurt, shit. Yeah, bro. That was that, that damn late 70s. That's when I stay home from school. Bro, we used to go to Playboy Mansion and shit and wind up there. And then I had a. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to his story. Well, he Playboy Mansion. Yeah, but he's talking about fucking. I always blue, wanted. Blue, blue clues and shit. I always wanted like to go a, to Playboy Mansion, man. I didn't like that place. It was scary. I heard it was. That a, shit was creepy, bro. Haunted like? Yeah, I think so. You got titties walking around you, but the titties are woo. That's a fucked up bitch. I'm out. Damn. Hey, when you went there, did you have to sign the paperwork and all yeah, that shit? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. The Boy. first time we did, but then I, I met Heffner like two or three times, but the times we went there was with Jerry Buss with the Laker guy. Uh-huh. He always had a robe on him. The, the two Heffner? times, I saw him three times. It's one time he did it, he had like a, like a fucking like a suit. Came out naked. Birthday suit. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> hey, what's up, on G? And there were times. There were times we went. And there was nobody. There was just a bunch of girls. And how old were you at this? I was like nineteen, twenty. Damn, that was lame. Dog. Nineteen or twenty. Michael J. Fox. So then, uh, Michael Fox was funny. He was, God bless him, man. He was a good friend of yeah. mine. Yeah, I feel so bad about what he's going through, but you know, great actor, very nice kid. <laughs> Back to and the future. It's funny because I saw him not too long ago, and, and you know, even though he's the Parkinson's really kicking his ass, yeah, his memory's still there. Right, but he can't. He can't control it. It's tough. You know, he looked dude. at me. He looked at me. He wanted to say certain things and he couldn't. But I know what he was trying to say. You know, I said, Mike, yeah. what's up, baby? He goes, he he wrote something down. It was a joke that we had between him, Philip McKean, myself, and Stoney Jackson. I can't remember. Oh, my great. We used to go, my greatest acting role is the movie I'm doing for Walter Hill. And he started that shit with that English accent. So we always would come around and say, we fuck with my greatest acting role. And he wrote that down on paper. I said, but I saw he was trying to say something. Yeah. He goes, Remember this. I know she almost cried and your well, ass off when he saw that. He, he didn't even finish. He goes, My great. And, I looked like, you already and then did. I did. I said, My great is acting. He said, <laughs> You remember that? It's like his speech comes and goes. Fuck. Because you remember that? I go, Fuck yeah, I remember that shit. You, he started that shit. What about uh, Michael Keaton? Michael Keaton, I met one time. He was weird. I, I've never been hung out with really? Johnny Depp and me were tight. Uh, Johnny Depp. Um, shit. Sure about Denzel. Denzel, you know, I played. He was basketball. later, wasn't he? No, Denzel was before. Oh, shit. I was older than us. I I used to live in Burbank, and I used to go to a place called Olive Park, right down the street of uh, by NBC. Yeah. Cause I went to high school, there and we used to play basketball there every every afternoon. And um, there was a lot of actors that would come through and just work out. And Denzel and I, I was working on Hill Street Blues at the time, and Denzel was doing San Elsewhere. So we'd run into each other yeah. every day, and we became good friends. And we actually had a basketball. Hoop. Well, no bullshit, because they were doing that show, The White Shadow. Remember that? Oh yeah. And so they started tearing that set up. So they were doing St. Elsewhere in that stage because White Shadow was canceled. So because of Denzel and, and some of the other actors, Howie Bandel and Michael Warren from Hill Street Blues, they kept one of the basketball hoops in that, in that, in that stage. In yeah. That, and with that, we used to fucking ball up there all the time. That's I would so go, instead of going cool. to the gym, by my, I would go to the, to the studio and I had my pass. Everybody knew, hey, Panchito, come on. Even days I wasn't working or after my, after my character was done on the show, yeah. I'd go there. It was Howie and um, Thomas Carter. I was like, oh, we bought it today. I said, bet. The only Latino actor. And I regret it. I missed this guy. I had a 911 Porsche, black. I got stopped like 15 times. Damn it. 15 times. I'll get stopped all the time. You were racially profiled. What? I lived in the valley. A little spick in a brown, in a black fucking. Porsche? It was fucking, it was like $30,000 car at the time. Was that the first car you bought? What was the first car you bought? First car I bought was a Pontiac Grand M. Brand new. 
that I bought bought. I had a fucking Pontiac Them Fiero. Pieces. I had a Fiero. I remember the Fiero. I wanted a Fiero, but it was too small because I had a girlfriend. Yeah. A few girlfriends, so I had to get a, a bigger <laughs> car. I had a couple girls in there. It was a two-seater. We okay. made it happen. Three Pontiac boys? Yeah, he popped open the trunk and it was over. On the 55 freeway. No trunk on the freeway. <laughs> but wait, wait. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Nah, nah. nah but, uh, my old days. I, th- th- that was the first car I bought, but it was finance. But the first car I bought, bought cash wise, was my Porsche. I so was mine. That's crazy. I paid twenty five thousand cash, and it was worth forty something. It was an eighty two, and I bought it in eighty four. I bought that bitch for uh, I what, what, what kind of car was it? A nine eleven uh, Targa, eleven a nine eleven Porsche Targa. Car. Porsche. Oh, those top? were the sick. No, it had, it had the oh, T yeah. top. Or heart. Or T top. With the whale tail in the back. T top. And I had my, my license plate was vanity. It said Ponch one. Yeah, <laughs> with the vanity plate. Sick. You don't know my. Story. Now, why do people put one? Because I see a lot of people with it. Because one of. You're no, solo. Too. That was my name, Ponch, Panchito, Ponch. Right. Four chips. But why one? When you put one. Yeah, that's my oh, first car, bitch. Well, for. Oh, I okay. Well, like, I'm just kidding. Because I, I no, showed up at the studio one time. I saw Michael Bivens from BBD. Uh-huh. He had BBD one. Yeah, no, because you're right. Because um, Eric Estrada had Ponch. On, yeah. his, on his Rolls Royce, but he had punch two, and I and I had punch yeah. one. That's why. And yeah. I told him one time, he goes, "Yeah, we ran it because he used to live up the hill. I used to live off of Lancashire and right by Universal." That was a Hollywood thing, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, back then, you know, especially as Latinos, we fucking pride, you know, we yeah. were proud. Customize everything. Shit. My license plate said "stole" and then one. Nah. <laughs> ah, that's a good one. That's a good some. one. Well, that's a good one. Said, "Don't stop me." <laughs> That's what my ex lady said. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. Sorry, babe. Cut that out. Cut that. That's out. Cut crazy, bro. Yeah. See, like when I start hanging out with this fucker, get all fucking my knocks. Wasn't he? Wasn't me. All right, bro. We haven't really talked music, so uh, I know I know being from New York, but you, you lived on the West Side as well, man. Mm-hmm. Who, who, some of your rappers, your favorite rappers, man. Let's talk '80s. Would you bump him? Cool DMC. Run DMC. I mean, not that cool DMC. Cool D. Cool Mo D. Motherfucker just made a new, gr- new group right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A just, super you know, group. Cool, cool MDC. Cool Sick. MDC. Uh, fucking, um, you want both sides or one side at a time? Don't matter. <laughs> My favorite, KRS One. Well, he was 90s. The teacher. The professor, yes, sir. Um, out of here. Pac was my man. I can't. I want, I want uh, Pac was my man. Big Pun, one of the greatest lyricists. Biggie was great too. And not because he's okay, Puerto Pac Rico. or Biggie? If you had to choose one. Lyrically, Biggie. Poetry, Pac. Mm. So I picked one of each. That. That's good. But that's he said Biggie one. first. Eight. I think Biggie just had the delivery. Huh? Pac had the lyrics. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, what did I say first? Um, you said Biggie. Lyrically? Yeah, lyrically, po- 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 poetically, Pac. Pac, Pac. Pac. Pac has stories, man. Pac has stories. That's true. Biggie can spit them. Yeah. Can tell you a story. But it was more like a fucking like you know like a movie. Pac Pac, says, Pac prayed it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Pac Pac shit was like prayers sometimes. Right. Deep. Like, deep. Yeah. Yeah. Real smooth. Especially like, when that like, Machiavelli no, came embed, out. The, it, it was that that rap that embeds in you. You know. Mm. And now and then that and then as far as that goes, if you go back to the old days, of course you know Run DMC, the fucking legends. Um, people forget about um, Grandmaster Flash. No, not Flash. Uh, Melly Mel. Right. Melly Mel was bad. I ran into him in New York once. Mm-hmm. We were out there in 94, me and Bobby, rest in peace. God bless, Bobby. And we were touring, and uh, we were out there walking the streets of fucking Manhattan or whatever. Mm-hmm. I see these four brothers walk. Big motherfuckers. Of course, it was fucking uh, Melly Mel. Melly Mel. Did he have the dreads? Did he have the, the, the trenzas? He had his fucking like see through. He was wearing the see. He always the, had, the fish. He's net. always flexing the muscle. Yeah, it was bro. Fi- the fish net. The fish yes, net. Yes, the black fish net, brother. <laughs> then he always wear that shit. He on the fucking streets. It's fucking. To this day, to this day, to this day, to this day, he wears those. <laughs> I know, and he's walking, and 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 I go, hey, hey, Bobby, I go, hey, that looks like fucking. What's it? Me and Jam and James and Bobby, our producer, and he goes, hey, and all I hear is we walk by him, we we walk right past him, we don't want to say nothing, we weren't sure. Hey. Ain't you that little mom, that little homie from Lot of Shady Brown? <laughs> hey, that. DJ, that's my shit. Yeah, you sound like yeah, 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 he's got that. Yo, yo, what's up? <laughs> and I go, <laughs> fuck, yeah. I go, man. And you know what? He ain't that big. He's, my, he's short. Melly, Melly ain't no, that no, big. No, but yeah. He, yeah, yeah. he was thick. Yeah, he was thick. I go, bro, <laughs> you just made our fucking trip. That's what's up. I go, you made our, I go, man, you're a legend, bro. And you, you, mentioned the, you mentioned the message earlier. Yeah, and he was like, I was like, he goes, what y'all doing out here, man? He's like, man, we're looking for a strip club. <laughs> right up this way. And he shot me to a strip club. He said, follow me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're was, going that way, brother. It, but just to get recognized, number one, as a West Coast act, 
in New York, mm-hmm. being Latino, but I'm just going to take that out of it. But here's it's, the shit. It's all here about but the fact that a legend recognized me in fucking New York. And here's the shit with that whole West Coast. Well, he recognized coast. Bobby, for the record. Yeah. Well, both of y'all. Yeah. Because you were taller than Bobby. Facts. Yeah. You know, so, so I, he knew when, your I, trick. when I first saw you guys, okay, you see Bobby, you're short, but this nigga, you stood out, but yeah. you both were badass. Literally, you Gracias. both were fucking fly. Yeah, mean, yeah. That, that made that crew. Yeah. If it, you can't have two if you don't have one. Yang, yang. You can't have one, but exactly. Yeah. But here's the thing that East Coast, West Coast shit, that was all blood and perversion because, but like you just said, there was a, a bunch of my boys from the East Coast, and nothing but mad love for these West Coast rap because it was different. Right. The hip hop here was, it was hip hop, but it was different. So they're like, yo, that fucking shit is fly. You know how many fucking East Coast rappers switch their 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 their, their flow to like mix it with the East Coast shit and West at the same time, especially with the Latino rappers, like you just said. Mm. Rakim or Big Daddy King? Rakim. Rakim all day. Kane is my boy my too. Kane's my boy. He's from the Bronx too. But Rakim, yeah, did you see his freestyle a few weeks ago? Nah, he came back. Did you see? Did you see the one that Kane did with um him and, and him and, and um. And KRS One, oh, months. Uh, bro, two Bronx One, fucking big daddy. Oh, the oh the battle. Yeah, the the verses. The verses. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think. That shit was crazy. Cause yeah, I think teacher got him low key. Though, got him dog. low key, nigga. Got him every key. I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't, didn't want to admit that. Not, 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 not only that, Woo. not only that. Kane brought out fucking some of the rock steady crew, right? He brought out fucking crazy legs. Crazy legs went out there for two seconds. That bitch can't even move no more, <laughs> right? But. Yeah, it is what Boogie it is. Boogie Down stayed to Boogie Down. He brought out Fable, who's also rock steady. And I didn't even fuck with Fable. Fable ate back that then. shit up. Fable yeah, ate you're right, that shit right. Up the pop, 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 yeah. So he not only kicked his ass on the verse, but he kicked his ass with the dance crew. Yeah. Because <laughs> Crazy Legs, Crazy Legs, and Fable and me were all rock steady. And Fable, but they had a little falling out. Crazy Legs and Fable. Pop past the Fable. So when K- when Daddy said, "Well, I'm bringing, rock, I'm bringing fucking um." Uh, uh, what's the crazy legs and a couple of the young cats from Rocksteady so what you bring him so I remember Fable called me yo the professor said he's doing this I said what he goes he wants me to come through I said do it nigga he goes but you know who's gonna be there I said who he goes I don't wanna say it cause he's right, right. but he's, he's he was talking about crazy legs and I said handle your shit though bro when he went in there fucking crazy legs he did his little bullshit Fable went and said blah blew that bitch up that was it. So fucking, to me, he, he busted his ass. So who, c- there was a uh, Rocksteady crew. New York City Breakers. New York City Breakers. Who were the ones, were they all in like the classic movies like, you Beach know, uh, Beach Street? Beach Street was like, the only one that had both of them crews together. Nobody else has had. The ones, uh, Flashdance had, had Rocksteady, which is actually where, where the beat, where the b-boy shit finally came out in, in the, into the public eye, so to speak. Yeah. You know, it blew it into mainstream with Flash Dance. No, I was just about to follow up with that. You're absolutely right. When, when Freeze comes out with the yeah. umbrella and does the move. Yeah, they do that break beat. <laughs> and it was on the sidewalk and he was yeah. spinning, right? That was Freeze with the umbrella. Mr. Freeze yes. does the moonwalk. Yes, yes, yes. The first time anybody's seen a moonwalk. And, and, he and then Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he taught her how to break. Yep. That's where she got her moves. Mm-hmm. Went back and killed that audition. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the one that did she the audition. Was bad as fuck. But you know who did that audition? You know who's spinning? That was Crazy Legs. They put Crazy Legs in the Lear Tunnel. No shit. Yeah, what? You didn't know that? No. You didn't know that shit? You seen Flash Dance? Double? Yeah, because she couldn't do it. She could do the up rock, but she couldn't do the spins. So, so they so put like, Crazy Legs, in, they had to put that nigga in fucking This Lear whole Lear time, bro. Whole I thought. If you look at the legs real good, you can see how thick the fucking thighs were compared to hers. And Jennifer Bills had a banging body. But her little lady what was her name? Jennifer Beals. She was she, bad. What? That spaghetti scene when she what? did. What? Yeah. That's oh, when I used to watch geez. movies, dog. I, I still go home and take the shower and do this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Classic flash dance on yeah. stage. It's yeah, but that, that was the breakout. Ah. That was the breakout. First time mainstream America saw break dancing with, with flash. Yeah. Then, of course, B Street. Um, over here when they did breaking and all that shit, that was the LA Poppers, the LA Rockers, which is Shabadu. Yeah, Papa uh, Taco, Bo- Papa Buckley Taco, yeah. uh, Pop and Pete, legends out here. Yeah, Sh- uh, what's the name? Um, Sugar Pop, Ozone, which Ozone. Or what's his real name? No, just um, sh- um, Turbo. What was it called Turbo? Oh no, Shabadu. You told Shabadu, me. Shabadu, Shabadu. And then there was this kid out of Chicago that came out here for a while. He, I think he died. Cuban kid, Oz Rock. Okay. Oz was a shit. And little Coco, little Coco. That's who. We, uh, that's what I was thinking about when you mentioned Little Caesar, Coco. Yeah, uh, he used to go to the rock. He used to go to the fucking radio track. Yeah, he spit on his head, and that he was he's known for that. Track. Yeah, yeah. Damn, it's crazy. he was the only little nigga. I he's still he was, doing. I, I still see him every now and then on YouTube. I mean, yeah, I know. I think I think him and Boogaloo Shrimp still do some shit together. 
crazy. That's so iconic, now that there's man. this badass dancer out of Phoenix right now. A good friend of mine, a guy named um, Decoy. D- you know Decoy? Oh, I met him. We met him three weeks ago. Oh, That's yeah, right. The Long Beach thing. Cool ass cat. At the Long Beach yeah. thing or in Arizona? No, no, Arizona. I was in Arizona. Arizona. About a month ago. I was ago. just there a couple in weeks Phoenix, ago. Phoenix, right? Yeah, we were mo- uh, about a month ago. Three weeks. Ago. I just I go back and forth. My girlfriend's over there. Yeah, we did a club. Okay. There, Phoenix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hot spot right there for sure. Yeah, no, yeah, Dick was a shit, boy. That boy bad. He pulled that up. Was he was like, hey, man, respect with the wolf. I, I go, man, you look for money. Well, like, he was here at the Long Beach show. He came to visit. He, he yeah. didn't do anything. I didn't catch him, but yeah, yeah. We, we saw him in Phoenix. Yeah, I, I said, did. I need you in the video, man. He's, in, you know, he's, he's <laughs> doing his thing. And he's doing it for the kids and, you know, and it just as you should. Like, I remember growing up watching Breaking. There's mm-hmm. people that would come do plays and, yeah. you know, uh, you pay a little ticket and you just go see the show and mm-hmm. they would get their hustle on, man. Yeah. And then afterwards they'd offer like, you know, classes, you know, to teach you how to break dance, you know, because I, that's what I want. I, I tried it. I just, I just sucked at it. I, Cause I just no, picked see, the mic after again, that. Again, again, here's the thing. You can only teach certain things. To people. Right. You know, the, the, the rest has to be natural ability. Facts. Yeah. You know? Cause I'm pretty sure if, if you didn't go to that class and you tried it by yourself, you probably would have done, you probably yeah. would have been able to do some shit. Man, I got as far as spinning on my back. Left. That was it. Like the egg rolls, I could not get the fucking the windmill. The windmills I could do. I could never I was, do that I was, shit. My shit was floor rocking <clears throat> and up rocking. The coffee grinder, when like you throw your leg under. No, the the breaker. fuck is uh, breaker talk? <laughs> what's he talking about? There's a lady. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> I'll show you right now. There's a lady. Here. Let's talk about. It's man. probably something that that was named Let's something different. Let's talk about L'Oreal. Yeah, and fucking, you know, what what about I, the Colt Forty Five? Was that something? Cold Forty Five. I hate that shit. Or you would kick your leg down like yeah, that. I hated that shit. I know that right? and that, that worm. Not the worm when you fucking with your wrist, you start walking like a spider. The spider shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that shit one time. That hurt like a bitch. <laughs> so I, you didn't spit on your hand then either. I could spit on my hand. That shit was dope. <laughs> that, that I could do. I spit on my head. My hair watch. That. I was That's called the coffee grinder. And then you know, kick my ass. The fuck is that? Coffee grinder. The coffee grinder. Watch. That's, that's that new. That's that new. Yeah, shit. give. I, I'm saying, give him. A, give him the original title. Well, oh, right there, that coffee grinder. That. Oh, okay. oh Elijah does it. <laughs> My son. Yeah, that's Fortnite dances. No way. Facts, dog. No, 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 no. Probably. Fortnite, Fortnite. Yeah, Shout out to Fortnite for bringing back the classic. Oh, that's my it. God. That's the coffee grinder. That's the yeah, shit that's I used funny. to be before the long time. Yo, let me ask you. Now that you say that, isn't one of your songs on one of those Grand Theft Auto things? Nah, I wish I'd be getting that check right now. Bro, me Vida Loca, you know, shit. Shit. Nah, probably is. You gotta go check it out. I'll see uh, a couple royalties from Vida Loca here, or there. But that's hey, you DJ. get royalties from Vida Loca. Well, yeah, because hey, DJ's on. I don't there. get shit. Yeah, so I haven't got a fucking residual fund. Start know. rapping, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 I rap my way out this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they rap me out of that movie so quick, though. No, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you mentioned something. If you watch the movie, I'm in the whole movie on and off. Nice. Yeah, I'm at the very beginning in the cemetery. I'm at the end, the very last scene when when the when the the baby dies and we go to the cemetery. Well, that's what he said. That he said the ending starts in the beginning. But no, there's two, there's three funerals in that movie. Well, the, isn't the end the one where that little girl dies, right? Yeah, that's how it opens up. Maybe the loca. Maybe the loca. Yeah, big big sleepy is uh, is big sleepy throughout the funeral. <laughs> Fuck, that's something I didn't know that yeah. shit happened in the movie. He pointed that but out. But it shows at the end too. Yeah, it's at the end too, but it's. Well, no, I know Allison does it, but I didn't realize it. I thought it was because the first, I, look, I wasn't supposed to be in that movie. There was no role for me in that movie. Uh, Jesse Borrego already had El Duran, and um, come say about the Julian Reyes, God bless him, my boy too. He had um, Big Sleepy, so Allison yeah. called me in, and I was met her, and I, th- I wanted to meet her because I thought she was a brilliant director. I've seen her work. She did a couple of little independent things with um, Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez. She had done this movie called Gas Food and Lodging. I thought it was fucking brilliant. This is Allison? Yeah, Allison Anderson. Anderson. Yeah, shout out to After Allison. that movie, t- shout out to me. I'll see you soon. Yeah. And that movie's brilliant. I was like, fuck, I would love to work with this lady. So it happened, chance happened to be that um, it was actually Jennifer, no, not Jennifer Lopez. Um, Salma? No, no, no. Oh. Jennifer, it was Jennifer. Oh. Jennifer said, because she, she knew Allison, she goes, yo, this lady wants to meet me. Oh. I was like, all right, cool. So I go and I read the script. I said, she fucking fell in love with me. I fell in love with her. In the sense, like she really wanted me to be in this one. I said, I, you know, I'm honored. I would love to. I said, I'm mad now because you hired two of my friends to play the only two roles I could play. So she started laughing. She was, let me, she was, are you available in the, for the next month? I go, unless I get a job tonight. <laughs> yeah. uh, she says, okay. Next day, I get a call from my agent. And she said, hey, come to the office. I said, what? She goes, I have something here that was delivered by Sony and HBO from Allison Anderson. I go, what the fuck? Mm. So I go to my agent's office. I was living in Orange County. 
And I go to my agent's office on Sunset in Coenga, which is quite a haul at fucking 3 o'clock in the afternoon on the mm. 5 freeway, 22. <laughs> so I get them, and it's an envelope about yay thick. And the first page says, Panchito, please read this. Not much right now. Tell me what you think and add what you want. Mm. I'm looking at four pages, Joker Bird. Three or four. They, they cut a couple of things out. I'm looking at this, okay, shit. So I, I, she gives me her personal number. I call her. That was the first day they started the shooting. I called the set. She answers the phone. They told her it was me. She said, Papa, what do you think? I said, it's awesome. She goes, do you want to, would you do it? I go, Allison, I would love to, you know, but shit, you know, my agent's going to ask you, whatever the fucking cost, whatever the bill. I said, I don't give a shit about the money right now. As long as you give me my billing, if this is the case, I'm going to shake straight with you. Fuck all the middlemen. I want, and Panchito Gomez as, or top billing. I know it's a small role, there's nothing in it, but she goes, you get what you want. Wow. And then she put, she goes, I said, the paid ads, which is the posters. So if you look at the poster, my name's on there. Top the building, right? there you go. So yeah, pretty much. That's crazy. So I go in the next day, the second day of shooting, and all my actors, everybody was in the movie, like, yeah, you fucking in this bitch. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. She goes, I go, what do you want me to do? She, I was like a glorified extra, basically. <laughs> and then we had run two really good scenes. One of them they cut out. But I don't know what the jumping in scene when we jump in, little sleepy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they they cut the beginning out when I fuck, I start the whole thing because I was the veterano. And it was a long speech. Because a lot of those guys were from the neighborhood. 90% of them. There was only like four, right. five, four or five actors. Yeah, that's a vet, a vet we had her on. Uh, yeah, yeah. She, those were all her homeboys. No, the, all home, the, 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 the Echo Park Peewees and the Locas. Yeah. The, Epico, wow. the Echo Park Locas. They were all them. All the girls besides the two, besides um, Baby Doll. Daisy and uh, Sad Girl. Sad Girl, Mousy, and Dimples. Yeah. And Giggles. Yeah. Those are the only five actors. The rest of them were all. Whisper was yeah, an Whisper actor. Was Whisper a, was a gangster. Yeah. Divine. Divine. Uh, Stranger, Vero. Stranger. And there's a few more. I can't remember the names right now. Yeah. But the homeboys, Puppet, P, um, Casper, Vero's husband, um, Joker Bird, the guy I played. Yeah. He's in the. He's in there on and off. But, um, yeah, it's funny. When I saw the movie, I was like, damn, where am I? <laughs> oh, that's me. I'm that one cholo with the white shirt. They're all wearing white shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it was a lot of fun. And it was cool. Like I said, I was there the whole time. And um, it was, you know, it was fun. You know, the money was decent. It was just, you know, she wanted me there to, to help the younger guys, the actors too. And I'm like, what do you want? What do you mean? She yeah. Goes, they look up to you, even the actors. Can you, you know, just make well, sure. Well, I was going to ask you, did this come out after American Me or before? After. American Me came out before. Oh, shit. American Me came out before. So you had that name. Man. Well, actually, America, I don't think American Me had just come out yet. When we started filming Me Villa Loca is when American Me came out. So we were still shooting. And then after Miguel Loca, I did a, a movie called Saints and Sinners with, me, with the guy who played Miklo with um, Damien Chapa. Uh-huh. That was really good. He, that was probably the best thing he's ever done. Mm. <laughs> to be told. Yeah. yeah. It's a really good movie. But um, then after that, that's when Selena came. And then Blood In, Blood Out, I heard, and Mi Vida Loca were, no, I'm sorry, no, Blood In, Blood, Blood Out, America and Me we were, were filmed the, on the same day. We were shooting at the same time. Or same time. We were shooting at the same time. Yeah, same, same, time, same time frame. But the the difference was the American Me had a had a calendar, uh, not a budget, but um, everything was released, you know, set up. It was calendared. Yeah. And not deadline like beginning and kind of a deadline because sometimes you you know you you say you got an eight week shoot, but you know you're gonna go ten just in case. Well, maybe the look. I mean, maybe the look. I'm sorry. Um, Brian Brown had a random fucking calendar. It was like let's just shoot. <laughs> you know, how long? How long? It was supposed to be four weeks. They went there like 15, 20, 30 weeks. Yeah. We were finishing our movie. They were still shooting some stuff. They had to go back and reshoot stuff. Well, there they had, they had a lot more behind the scenes issues with, uh, with managers and uh, with Oh, in the prison? Uh, with the prison scenes, there was they took us aside. I believe they took care of the story after it. Uh, some time to get to sit down with the with the uh, heads, the you know the people to get permission. To we do. did not have that problem. <laughs> our problem was solved before that. In America, me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we had to sit down way before that. Wow, that, again, with, look at that. We had to sit down way before that. Um, we had problems, ain't no lie. Everybody's going to have problems. Say, but you see, the, the, the thing with, with, with Taylor was, and I've heard that story. I can't say yes or no because I wasn't there, but I've heard that story. And I know that situation should have been handled before they started filming. So apparently something went wrong while they were filming that the motherfuckers got pissed off. So he had to, he had to like sue that situation. We didn't have that problem until after the movie was done. When the movie is done, our problem was because 
it was done in in a, in a way where, you know, at one was in and Universal Studios. No shit, there's a cone here. Let me go this way first, and then come there. When we come back the other way, then we're gonna go right through it. You know what I mean? Mm. So they 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 knew what they were doing when the, when the the Mexican mafia knew what what was what happened in reality at the end of the, when we when the narration stuff came out. Yeah. You know, there was that's not what we were told. That's what the shit, that's what shit popped off. Right, right, right. We when all the, know that story. If you yeah, don't, then go Google yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you don't, man, shit, I I don't know nothing about it. I wasn't there. <laughs> wasn't me. <laughs> I'm just an actor, so please leave me alone. No. Well, know, something sorry. we wouldn't know or we don't know yet about behind the scenes or go. behind the the filming aspect that you haven't talked about anywhere else. <laughs> <Not> anywhere else. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, look, you know what? Some some people have asked me that question. I don't really say much because there's a lot of shit that I. You don't want to say. Want, you can't I don't want to say, but you know, I'm amongst family here. At this point, fuck it. Um, there was, behind the scenes, shit, we were shooting. I remember we were filming. Um, the fuck was it? I want to say Juvenile Hall. Yeah, it was, no, it was Juvenile Hall. A funny story, then. Um, we're filming. You know that scene where where where, where the, when Big Happy comes up to Santana, he says, "Hey, man, you thinking of letting him in?" I said, "Yeah." All right. So this kid was funny. I can't remember his first his name for life for me. Um, he was younger than us. We were in our twenties. I think he was like eighteen, but he's still a kid. So we're shooting in juvenile hall, and he knew some of the kids that were in there, some of the real inmates. So us actors, we had to wear these vests to differentiate the actors from the from the inmates. Right. So as soon as they say cut, then you know we had to put them bitches back on because otherwise you know you get fucked. They, they lock you up. They don't. The CEOs don't know who's who. Yeah. yeah. You know, even though the ones that are new. So this kid. Um, we're in between scenes or makeup or something, and we're sitting there, and we put on our vest. Meaning, well, apparently he decided he was gonna go play basketball with some of the boys that he knew from his neighborhood. Mm. He didn't put the vest on. Somebody jacked his vest. Oh, nobody knows. When they boop boop, they took it. They said, "Everybody, says, where the fuck is that I can't remember his name. I'm sorry, but they were looking for him. I go, he was fucking just right here. Yeah. So they locked all the kids down, right? Because it was the turn. They took him. Oh, I'm an actor. Shit. I'm an actor. They were like, "Shut the fuck up. Get your ass in there." <laughs> when they found him, two, he cost he cost universe. I think it was like a hundred thousand dollars. We had to stop filming. We couldn't find him. <laughs> he couldn't find him because he was locked up. <laughs> and nigga was in a fucking bunk in crying, a cell, crying. Oh. Everybody, Julia is like a, the rack. He was crying. But I'm like, "Shut the fuck up. Sit down." But sir, can you? Okay, sure. Whatever. Where's your jacket? I had it. Bullshit. Damn. They didn't believe Damn. it. So they had to. There was nobody at that point. We were like, he was just here. He was playing basketball with his, with his friend. And then one of the CEOs comes over. Look, this was, the, we found one of these over here, the, the green vest, and it was behind. So I guess somebody did it on purpose, or he moved, or he yeah, put it, it there something. or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody knew. It was behind like a wall or a pillar. Yeah. So they found out, I said, oh, shit, the motherfucker's is dead. Or he just ran away, ran away, but why would he run away? He leaves at 5 o'clock in the afternoon anyway. We can get out of here. <laughs> they found him like two and a half hours later in a fucking when the lights out type shit. No. <laughs> and he came out of there. Fired. Fucking, yo, he was fired. Wow. They, they cut his scenes. He had more Because he took off. He left the set. Went and he, cost him, he cost him over $100,000. Oh, so that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he stopped filming. Yeah. Yeah. looking for a motherfucker. Meanwhile, me and Steve Wilcox and Richard Coca were like, and Richard, Richard's laughing. The guy's kid that played Mundo. But he felt bad for it because he knew him. I said, man, I was an asshole in a sense. But yeah, I told that kid four times. He was being a pain in the ass. I told him, Rigoberto, Rigoberto. I said, I said, Rigoberto, chill out, bro. I know you said, you got to be careful. These kids, even though they're 14, 15, they're in here for a murder. Right. Frankly, they're children. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Them niggas are little soldiers for the future of the the, the BGF, the, the Aryan brothers, the Mexican. Them niggas ain't here to, to, because they're here for a reason. Right. You knew him on the black, though, don't mean shit. That nigga probably killed five people. He's about to fucking eat your ass, too, so relax. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, you kind of chunky, bro. Uh -huh. And them niggas is hungry up in here. So that's the one that says, you thinking about letting yeah, them in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he had th that scene after the rape, when my character gets raped, he was supposed to be behind us. And then there was a scene in the handball court where he goes and gets the balls for us or whatever, and he starts talking shit. They cut that out. We never wow. filmed it. We never filmed it. We couldn't find him, so they... they they had to let him go, and it was sad because he was a kid. But at the point, they, 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 we were all warned many a time. When they went to the big prison, the same shit. We, as the, the the three young guys, we were dressed in civilian clothes, so we were good. But all the other, almost, even though we were almost, everybody had to wear that vest. Makes so, sense. Because, uh, you know, and they were shooting with the big boys. 
yeah. in the yard. If you've seen the scenes with them in the yard, that's all the... Yeah. And never before in the history of movie making has that been allowed. And that was allowed because of the Mexican mafia, for one. And uh, the California... Um, uh, what do you call it? The prison system. Yeah. Mm. They fought for that shit, but the Emmy said, all right, cool, you can come to my house and, and play. Yeah. And that was one of the other stories that nobody knew. They, they, nobody knew that shit. Nobody yeah, you got to get permission? Yeah. And then, and then here's another behind the scenes story that nobody said. That scene where, where, where um, that was the first day we went to Folsom to watch them. They, that was the first day. They were, no, they had filmed like two days before. So the young guys, we had to go and watch the older guys to emulate them, see what they were doing because we didn't start filming until after. So with myself, Steve Wilcox, and um, and Richard Mo- <laughs> Richard um, Coca go out there, and we're chilling, we're watching, we're fucking well protected too. So all of a sudden, you see almost come out from the, when he's coming out the hole in the movie when they, when they threw him in. Remember mm. that the, the the whole crew waits from outside. So he comes out, it's an action, and I'm sitting, I'm like, everybody's smelling something, right? You're in the yard, the folk can fold some, bro. Just, I'm scared shitless for one. <laughs> you know we're protected. It's still scary. Did it make it hard to act? No, I wasn't acting. They were. Oh, we good, were watching. Yeah. We were watching oh, the older guys because our stuff was in juvenile hall, which was just as bad as the. Fucking oh, that's movie. right. That's it, right. But let me tell you, it was just as bad as the big prison. The little, the, with these little motherfuckers. Yeah. It was. It was, it was no joke. Just the fact, like I said, because they were kids, you know, I mean, shit. Mm-hmm. They were. They were more ruthless. So anyway, we go like this. We're looking, and all of a sudden, I see fucking uh, William Forsythe, the older JD. And they all meet up like this. And Santana's coming out like this, and they all meet up like this, and they keep walking down the middle of the yard. Yeah. He goes, hey, you looking good? Like, sh- smell that shit. And everybody's, what the fuck is that? And almost they said, we're acting. And they say, cut. Eddie looks and goes like this. And Force like, <laughs> that nigga fucking with bro- smoking a real fucking joint in the prison, in the yard. <laughs> while they were filming, high as fuck. If you see his eyes, he was high as fuck. Nobody knows that story. You think no it was shit. Real, You think, well, the, we do, the cast. Right. So almost turns around and looks at him and he says, Billy, he said, what the hell? He goes, I'm already inside, homie. <laughs> the fuck they gonna do to me? <laughs> he, he, now, you talk about getting the character, he really got in the character. That shit was hilarious. And I kept smelling it. It was good weed, too. Apparently, because uh-huh. I see him smoking a cigarette. Nigga, that was weed. That was weed on the yard while he's talking to, hey, homie, glad you got out the hole. I mean, you can, and didn't and tell he nobody. Pub- yeah. No, but he kept pub- the, the smoke. I think he was doing it on purpose to let people y'all smoke and what? Damn, on blast, busting scene. Where he got in? How he got in? Damn. Because we all were searched every time we walked in, no matter what. There's rhyme to his reason, though. There, the camera, the, all the all the equipment and all that shit. It would take literally six hours for the the CEOs to check everything: lens, fucking microphone, this little knob right here. <laughs> yeah, all that shit for real. <laughs> So it got to the point where once we finished shooting, even in juvenile hall, that equipment had to go into a, into like a room, pad it up, and locked up, so they don't have to research it again. They researched it in the morning, but not as as yeah, not as what do you call it as, as prominent as they did that. They were telling me, we really fucking can you film yet? Well, we don't got a camera. Why? Because the fucking FBI, the COs are checking it. Damn. So all that. So how the fuck did you got that? We didn't, prisoners. The nigga got high. He, he, he said the prisoners hooked him. Or the COs, who knows? How, where he got it from, nobody knows. And that was that was not only one time, that was more than one. When they were in the in the when they called a meeting, uh to when, when almost when when Santana comes out the hole and he calls a meeting with the lawyers, the little puppet first shows up. Yeah. That they're smoking, that was weed in there too. <laughs> and that was inside the prison. Damn. Unreal, right? Pretty much. That's crazy. How they get away with that shit, yes. man? With no prop weed? No. Prop no, tobacco? No, no, no. Not if that was prop weed and it smelled like that, damn. Ah, damn. That's tight, though. I mean, that's real. That's as real as it gets, too. Yeah. And, uh, with us, I don't think we have much shit. We didn't have too many problems. Remember the scene that we did at night when we, when we were running from Hazard? Oh, when, when, when we run from Hazard, we jump over the fence, the, mm-hmm. kid, the three of us? I fucking, I, I slashed myself, yeah, like fucking, I think like seven or eight butterfly stitches in one of his arms. I can't remember which one. Oh, shit. Because of the fence. When JD, when we jump over and JD fucks up his ankle. Yeah, yeah, his, I think. He broke his ankle for real. No. Mundo, when he flipped over, his whole fu- uh, his fucking dickies that ripped all the way from fucking ass to, cr- to ass to balls. We had to, ju- that shit was, that, that was no joke. That was a real jump on that fence. And we only did it at one time. So 
But I went over there. There's this arm right here. And like fucking eight stitches. Didn't even know I played stupid. We all got workers' comp. We stopped shooting for a week. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> like, how does that work? You sign a. We had insurance. I mean, they have to. Yeah. We were like, no, but but Wilcox did break his. He was the worst. So he broke his ankle, which which actually showed, which actually worked out because when I carry him to, before we get inside, before he gets killed, yeah, or shot, then when we're still running from the gang, yeah, 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 he's hopping. Oh, come on, right, go. right. Well, he because that's the real deal, right there. That happened for real. And then he got shot in the cab. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wow, that's dope. That's crazy, right? And that's a true story. Not too many people know that one either. <laughs> it's funny because me and Wilcox were just talking about that with my girlfriend. I said, she was like, I go, no, nigga, I got fun. I, and I played, I didn't feel shit. I didn't feel nothing. I was like, damn, it feels warm. And it was cold. Out. For some, it feels yeah. warm. And then I look, and I, I didn't have my towels. I was just blood dripping out of here. And I'm thinking, you know, I scratched myself because I did have a cut here. Like, okay. I go like this, and the shit was ripped open. Right? Uh, I can't see it because of the tattoo, but it was ripped yeah. open right here. No, it's okay. I'm good. All right, that's a wrap. Four o'clock in the morning. That's a wrap. We were supposed to work till like seven. Had to cut us out. And fucking paramedics came to look at us. I mean, that's, you know, you're talking about a major studio, so they have to be, you know, they have to make sure that we're okay for insurance purposes. Yeah. And why not? So Steve couldn't shoot again for another. That's when we did, that's when they, they rescheduled everything where we did um the scene where me and Jay, where me and Mundo go into the, into the juvenile hall. Yeah. When I finally showed my ass for the first time on public viewing <laughs> and my mother had to see that that I fought for that was shit. Tommy's favorite part <laughs> <laughs> he pauses what's my, that look, like? Look, 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 look. he's, he's looking at it right googling, now like he's googling it right now yo my man I love you shit but come on now he's looking at the phone right now I think I was gonna don't look that. at me that was my next question <laughs> don't look at me little Tommy what was that like though cause you know your mom's already seen that she raised you yeah my mom saw that shit when I was a baby exactly you know, I'm a grown man at this point oh. shit <laughs> I see. My girlfriend wasn't too happy about it back then. Not the new, but this is my, I'm talking 1980, whatever. 1980. Oh, I'm sure. She wasn't too happy about it. Well, you show your ass? She goes, well, I can show mine too. I said, well, it's on you, girl. <laughs> I got paid. I got paid for I got paid, for I got paid shit. <laughs> you got a house? You, you, is your rent paid? You got food? You, you, your payment on your car is okay? Well, shut the fuck up. Damn. Double no. cheeked up on the big screen? <laughs> yeah. But that's when we we shot those scenes. And then the, the rape scene. And then uh, when, when me and Mundo are coming out before we meet JD, we had to shoot all that. Uh, like a week, almost two weeks, and fucking Steven couldn't come back to shoot. And when he came back, the whole thing with the leg, yeah, it worked out good because he actually had a cast. On that oh, scene. that's right. It was the right. same fucking leg. He actually had a cast. So, so when he came so on the jab, he was already limping. That's yeah, actually yeah. from his leg breaking. Yeah, from that, he, he popped a bone. I don't know what the, but it was, shit was nasty. <laughs> it was like, that shit looked like fucking the elephant man on the yeah, legs. The, <laughs> <laughs> the medics were busy with you guys. Rocky Dennis. Yeah, yeah. So that shit looked like fucking the man. Like, you know, oh it's, my it's, gosh. It's, it's, and you know Steven speaks Spanish. He's Venezolano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, mira, coño, brother. I go, ¿qué pasó, papi? He goes, mira esta fucking pierna. I go, yeah, diablo, bro, esta jodida. I go, ¿Tú tienes, is that you sure you got both feet tied up together? He goes, no, motherfucker, that shit went poof. It was huge. Oh shit! It was huge. You could like and he's white as fuck, so you could see the bones thing. You know, like, oh. like mayonnaise with a fucking chicken bone hanging. Shout out! I know we talked about that, but Steve Wilcox, well, you know, Steve Wilcox. He, he was on our lighter shade of brown man, a hip hop locals out man. Salute to my guy. I know you you had him on the phone earlier. We we're talking to him, so that's yeah, man, just I love for you guys. Man, that shit was dope. He came in. He did it out of love. You know what I'm saying? See, that's what pissed off because Pac did it. You guys did it. And where am I? I'm nowhere. No music. Well, you're on. What you mean? Nobody got me in no fucking. No, no. no you you're on the new lighter shade. We're we're dropping in a couple months. Even I was gonna ask video. you if you'd be on our. Fuck yeah, you're on our you're new gonna shit. Ask, you don't ask me. Tell me when. Shit. I'll be here. Well, we're gonna do this after we. <laughs> bet, bet. Put you on the mic right now. I'm down. Shit, I'll, we'll do I'll a line. I'll even throw a verse. Damn. 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 Like you said, music I video cameo beat. for sure. Play my beat. Yeah. Yeah. Beat. Put, put him on the blackout booth already. Throw 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 me the beat. I throw one verse in that bitch. Yeah, Special hit the lights. Star. Shit. He ah, comes a cappella. Oh, yeah, never, never, never mind. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Give me a beat. Give me, give me, give me some Come music. Beat. I'll, I'll throw you a beat. Play your beat. beat. Play your beat. I'll, throw you, beat. I'll throw you a fucking verse. Yeah. Put, Are you a good freestyler? You good at it? Well, improv improvisation, right? Here we go. Throw on a beat. Play a beat, Danny. He gonna make himself a beat if not. We don't want to make more double beat. time. Yeah, man. Uh, so, Lightest Hit and Brown throw in fucking Steve Wilcox. Tupac throws Steve Wilcox. What is it? A white thing? No. no I'm kidding. I'll fuck with you because he's white. I don't know. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just, like somebody knew somebody who knew him. And I think that's the only thing I seen was uh, I think Decoy, before I even met him, he's got this video where it's a song. And in the beginning, he's got this mask, the, the homie mask. 
and the penalties. He's coming down through a bridge. I don't know if you ever seen. Mm. I didn't. I didn't know decoy yet, and I'd seen that one time. I said, "What the fuck? That's my voice." It was <laughs> it's not man. I told me, uh, "We make it. We don't fake it." That whole little dialogue shit. I still don't remember that shit. Yeah. So, but that's me. Who the fuck? Wait, was, how do you not know that line? That was your one of your 40, classics. Forty years, man. It's been a long time. No bullshit. I still remember Sunday afternoon, motherfucker. Well, yeah, that, yeah, because you repeated that a thousand times. Yeah, true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> hey, shit. And you still hear it. You're on top true. of it. Well, true. Okay. That's true. It's not, we don't make it. You know, we don't make it. We just take it. You know, we don't fake it. We just take it because it's not primera, as they say. <laughs> and then Steve's like, the best. but we are young, belonging with anything. But respect. respect. But respect is even more. It's even better. It's even better. Yeah. Dennis Mendes. That's what he did on our shit. That's one of the best lines in the movie. To me, that's the my best, my favorite line. His. And then when he tells when he tells Bundo when we're coming down the hill. He goes, hey man, we gotta be happy. We gotta, you know, my mom's gonna whip my ass. And he goes, he's in that look. And I look at it. He goes, he smokes a cigarette. What we do? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking sweet. The way his delivery. You know, let me tell you, he's one of my favorite actors. Steve Walker is one of my best. Hell one of my favorite yeah, actors. that's what's up. I tell him that all the time. He looks at me. He goes, yeah. I was going <laughs> to ask you, Matt. That's one of my fucking questions. Like you know, besides yourself, who was one of your favorite actors at that time? At that time, my that my, was my, doing my, it. my heroes were with you alongside. Oh, you mean my my think, for my genre or, or yeah, people? Yeah, you're a your genre. Peers? I th- your peers. My peers. I, I would say Issa Morales and Ramon Franco, of the, of the Latinos. And of, of, uh, are we talking specifics or just anybody per se? Just specific, yeah. And, uh, Michael J. Fox is one of my favorite actors. Sure. You know, but yeah. um, but movie wise and like dramatically wise, I would say Issa. I, I respect a lot, and I thought he was really good. Jimmy Smith was good. my favorite. To be honest with you, was a guy named Andy Garcia. Mm. Oh. Yeah, the little guy, you know, he did a couple of little movies here, The Untouchables, mm-hmm. yeah, The Godfather Three, yeah. which I didn't care for too much, the <laughs> Ocean's Eleven, shit like that. Andy was bad for me. That boy, that, but all time, all time favorite, yeah, all time for lifetime, yeah. Brando, Oosh. De Niro, Shh. Edward Olmos, and Charles Bronson. Wow. Hey, I'm gonna make him a daily camera for you. Mm. <laughs> Even before that, you gotta see fucking Mutiny in the Bounty. Damn, the yeah. shit. No, The Godfather was the shit. But Pacino, and it's funny because I've known Pacino since I was a kid. You know, didn't know, you know, him and my father, like I said, were really, really close friends. And when they were doing Scarface, I remember going to the set a lot. And he would walk on, he'd come to the house. He was in New York, but we were living here in, in um, North Hollywood. And he would come to the house dressed like a fucking Cuban immigrant before they started filming. And I would talk to him a lot. He would come to eat because he loved my mom's food. And he would talk to her. He started talking like that, the way he talking. Like, like it treated me because you know, he's a very method actor, and I'm I'm not a method actor like we were speaking earlier, to each his own. So he goes deep in the character. So I also say, "Oh, you why?" I go, "That's the accents sound decent, bro. It's not it's not as fake as most accents. It sounds good." I go, How, "What the fuck?" He goes, "From hanging out with this fucking prick right here, your father, <laughs> and this other motherfucker, how many sides? Well, you think I don't fucking know how to talk like that? Yeah, and that's how my father talked." I said, this bitch. Sick and yeah. This bitch. Yeah. In, my house, up on in it. my house, he told me that, but hang out with this fucking prick, your father. And see the lobby. And leave that shit alone. Fuck you, say son. I'm talking to your fucking son. Damn. Damn. That's sick and spoke from and, and then, and that, that alone, I mean, the method actor, I get it. But I never did, I've, to this day, I've never told him he's been my favorite actor. Not because he's a friend, but he's my favorite Naturally. actor. Naturally. Well, now he knows. Bra- Brando, <laughs> but Brando De Niro. Pacino, Charles Bronson, and Edward Jenner almost. I was going to wait for you to mention and Denzel. De Niro. And Denzel. Yeah. And I, Denzel. I mentioned De Niro. What about second. Morgan Freeman? Morgan's great. Morgan's badass. Yeah. I have a question. I like hearing you in your native tongue. You're Puerto Rican, fucking like that. Okay. You got that roll of the R and all that. Okay. Have you ever had um, a role where you can speak your native tongue, where you've let that be able to shine at all? Um, yeah, you know, that's a good question. I don't think so. Damn, that'd be tight. Hey, oh no, on Hill Street, I think on Hill Street Blues in the pilot, in the pilot Hill Street Blues, I did say something. It was a, it was a character, you know, it was a Puerto Rican kid out of Chicago. Mm-hmm. I was 15 years old, and there's a scene where I, t- I think I tell the guy, I said, I said, I'm on the phone with one of the cops, and the cop said something. And I tell the guy, I said, cabrón, que se que estoy hablando, or something like that. Yeah. And that was, I think that's the only time I was able to speak. Because other, other than that, you know, I play Chicano a lot. Mm-hmm, exactly. And it doesn't matter to me because I could. That I mean, I, I grew up 
Yeah, you're still that part. Yeah, anyways, and not even the part. Is I grew up with them. Yeah. So you know, once you if you go somewhere for a certain amount of time, let's just start. To, you know, it starts resonating. Seeps in. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna learn that. Yeah, it's gonna stick to you. At one, you know, I go to fuck, like here. I I hear we shake hands like this. Yo, what's up, bro? With the fish. I go back home to New York or to Puerto Rico or to uh, Tampa. I do that. People and I'm going like this. People are like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's so, different. Or oh, when I come here and that happens, and I go like this to give you the shank, right? And, you, and you're waiting for it, and I'm like, oh, shit, my bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? But key. after a couple of weeks, it just... It, it's natural. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's echolalic is the word. Yo, Panchito. Yes, sir. Did you ever watch the TV show that Paramount Plus made, uh, The Offer? It was written... It was yes, 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 yes. About the, about the making of The Godfather? Yeah, what did you think about that? It was decent. I thought it was cool. Yeah? I think so it was, cool. was a lot of that pretty accurate? I be, no, I believe it was true, because I, I'm one of the guys, the guy that played... Um, Young Tessio is a really good friend of mine, the guy named Joe, uh, Frank Silvera. Yeah. And he told me that when they were filming, I remember I was a kid, and I was living in L.A., and they were shooting in New York. Yeah. And I remember him telling my father and other people, you know, the fucking Colombo was getting crazy on these people and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know who Colombo. I thought Colombo was the TV show. Yeah. Remember that TV show with yeah, Peter yeah, Falk? Yeah, I remember that one. So that's what I was thinking. But then when I saw the show, it all made sense to me. I'm like, wow. But um, I believe it happened because that's how that's how she, Hollywood for one is a pain in the ass. Yeah. You know, you're doing a movie about an ethnic family. You know, back then an Italian family, and and it's you know, it's like they they didn't want to put the money in. Coppola, Coppola did it. You know, that was one of my favorite all time writers, so producers, directors. Was it really that hard for Al Pacino though? Because it, it sounded like from the from the depiction in there, they the director the producers didn't want Al Pacino. Oh, for the Godfather? Yeah. And from what and I understand, I don't know that whole thing from what I from my side from what I know, they didn't want him. Yeah. My because he those were the days where him and my dad and my mom were really close. Well more than my dad and him. And they were work they were doing um working at a place called the um the improv, which is a big comedy but it was in New York. It was called Bud Friedman's The Improv. And they were like fucking, you know, bartenders and and, and bus boys, so to yeah. speak. To pay for their their um the acting classes, my father and him, and a bunch of other a guy named William Devane. My my dad came up with some big fucking names back then. It was like you know Barbara Streisand was in his class, uh, De Niro, a bunch of those guys. And they were at a place called the Actor Studio with Lee Strasberg. Damn, that's it. So Damn. so at that time, I remember that you know I asked my dad one time, and, and he said they did not want him, and he was struggling and shit. But um, you know I I never asked him that because you know I. I I talk to Al every once in a while. You know, I, I tend not to like fucking you know, hawk him because I've known him since I was a kid. But he, if you don't look at me, you don't sit down, give me a hug, talk, give me a kiss in the cheek. Come on, let's go eat something. Take me to his brother's pizza shop. But you know, we never really talk shop like that. We, he always talks about how my dad was him. Did, did you ever happen to get to meet like Al Ruddy, the guy no, who produced never, it? No, never met him. That would that would have been a cool motherfucker to meet. I probably did see him back in the day because that was Paramount in the seventies. And I used to, you know, as a kid, I used to audition for a lot of shit. So I might have run into him, but... I'm, I'm going to go completely... Are you done? Yeah. Okay. Sanford and Son. Remember the Puerto Rican? That yeah, was that was Gregory Sierra. Do you, do you know him? He played my father on an after-school special. <laughs> Damn. He played my father, Greg Sierra. What's his name? Jesse or something? And then he played... Uh, in, or Jesus. Jesus. And then, and then in, uh, he was in Barney Miller. He played Chato. Chato. Wow. He was a, the, the Puerto Rican cop in Barney Miller yeah, the first, yeah, yeah, the first yeah. five seasons. And then... He actually did the pilot of Miami Vice. He played the, he played the, the, the lieutenant before Edward almost came in. That's great because he, I, as far as thinking back, that's probably one of the first Latino actors. Yeah, he was. He was. He was one of the biggest. That's crazy. That's dope. He was in that. He did a movie, uh, Deep Cover, with uh, with um, with Fishburne, <laughs> with Larry Fishburne and Hell Bill yeah. Dudley. Right he played the fucking crazy motherfucker. There. Great guy, man. He was a little that's weird dope. too because he, he was skinny and tall. And I was a little, he played my father in a thing called Loser Take All. Yeah. And I was this little kid who wanted this bike and moved into this neighborhood with all these little white kids that had these BMX bikes. <laughs> and it, the father winds up making me a bike out of an old beat up Huffy. Yeah. You know, after school, the so kid wins a bike with a ghetto bike. I mean, a, a race with a ghetto bike. And mm. it was about racism. All these mo all these little shows had um, moralistic values. And that was about, you know, how uh, more geared towards children, how, how not to judge a person because of the color of their skin. Or their financial, but at the time, the neighborhood that we lived in supposedly in the, was a middle class neighborhood. But the little kids in the neighborhood didn't like the Mexican. They would call him Taco, Hey Beaner, this, this, and that. So I dealt with that reality of how you know these kids are bullying verbally other kids, whether it was Asian, Hispanic. Yeah. And then of course at the end they all become good friends. 
You know? That's crazy, man. Dude, that's funny you met this that Greg Sierra, man. He was a cool dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking back, man. I mean, just and as far as I remember, days. he never, he always had that little ball. He looked like, he reminds me, Santana reminds me of him. Carlos Santana. Oh, okay. If okay. you look at him, Santana's a little chunky now. But they, if you look at them back in the day with the fucking big old balls, I shouldn't talk shit, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but um, they had that long hair here and bald here. Yeah, yeah. Santana, that's what Greg Sierra looked like. That's right. He was really cool, though, man. Real hardcore Puerto Rico, too. That boy, could, that man could cook. I remember that. What's, what's some of your, I mean, since we're talking about Puerto Rican food, like mm-hmm. platanos, you grew up Platanos, is good. Arroz con gandules, obviously, that's everybody. Yeah. Um, pasteles. Whew, my mother makes some pasteles. They like tamales, yeah. but they're made out of platano. And it's pretty much the same thing, but you put the you put you put chunks of meat in it. Either you put pork, or or beef, mm-hmm. or chicken, and then little cuts of potatoes in it. Mine, I like plain. I, I'm a meat and potato guy. I yeah. don't eat vegetables. <laughs> I don't eat vegetables. I'm allergic to. But it's like flaky, like a pastry, or what? No, it's 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 soft. Mm. It's real soft. It's like a tamale kind of. But the platano is even, the texture is really soft and not mushy, but like like potato, like mashed potato kind of. Yeah. Or not mashed potato, but. Yeah, kind of like a thicker mashed potato. You know, it's not real chewy, but it's soft. Oh my god, it's awesome! It's got some texture. They, usually, they do. It's ma- mainly done like during Christmas and right Thanksgiving here? time. Yeah, there you go, pateles. Tamales. No, that's a pateles. <laughs> hey, those are fire. Those are pateles. You can wrap them on paper on the on the platano. Leaf. It's made from platano. I'll say banana. Leaf? Like the masa is platano. Here we go. Like green, green, green banana and platano. The inside of that bitch it depends on what you put. My mom usually puts olives and all that shit, but she knows that she gotta make mine separate. Uh huh. So she does my little bash. My sisters get mad at me. Wow, well, you special. You special. For real. But also the um, the pernil, which is basically like um, like shredded pork, like like carnitas. Right. But you know we we season it different. You Have know? you found a spot on the West Coast like that? There's a place called well Floridita. The, 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 it's Cuban, but they they do it's not as good. But there's one called Versailles. It's on. Uh, or I say it's on Venice. Okay. Or cover somewhere in Culver City. And they, they 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 come as close. As, I mean, that's a good question. I'm gonna find a Puerto Rican place. Right? Yeah, they I haven't, haven't really one. found one like I hear this. One. I know I mean, there was one or two, but the ones I'm talking about are more Cuban. Yeah, but Cuban right. food and Puerto Rican food, ninety nine point nine percent the same shit. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, the same kind of seasonings, um, the same that, that flavor. Palate. Yeah, yeah, it's like the, the el sazon y el adobo que le ponen. I need a man mm. find a spot, bro. Have you had Puerto Rican food before? Oh. No, I don't think I ever had. Shit, bring, I'll, I'll buy ingredients. I'll cook. Oh shit! Uh, that's what, that's let's what I do. Go. I, shit, I cook my ass off, kid. Ooh, let's go. I, I could cook my ass off. My wife, God bless her, before she passed, she taught me a little bit. My mom, you, I learned. You know, I was a bachelor for years. Yeah. So I had to eat, otherwise I fucking die. <laughs> so, you know, spaghetti and meatballs only went so much. Chef <laughs> Boyd, shit, they started getting. That's crazy. right. <laughs> so, but um. Top ramen? Uh, ramen I did for a little bit. I throw some cheese, some adobo, some put potatoes in there. You know, you spice gotta it have, up. Yeah. yeah, throw some little piece of chicken in that bitch. Then you yeah. got some, then you got a meal. Now you got a meal. Yeah. No, but yo, no, I, I could cook. But my wife used to tell me, she goes, the kitchen's yours. Go. And she goes, you got it for a month. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, I don't want to see it. She goes, can you cook tonight? I bet. My daughter was like, dad's going to cook. The first time my daughter saved my food, when they got a little, little. They had it when they were little, but they didn't realize it was her, me. Because they used to see my wife in the kitchen. That, my little daughter said, what the fuck is this? I said, why? She goes, who made the bat? didn't make this. I go, why? She goes, oh my God, this is banging. This is the shit. I said, oh, really? I said, well, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't believe me. She thought I ordered it from restaurant. From that time on, my kids didn't want them, wouldn't let my, my, my wife cook for the longest. How many kids you have? Uh, altogether four. They're older. I mean. yeah, my two oldest um, are stepkids. I've had them since they were four years, five years old. All right, but right. Mine. Then I got my daughter, right. who's 24. No, 25, and my little one's 20. Well, not little anymore. He just turned 21. That's yes. right. And w- what's the hardest thing? Uh, I mean, because I get like I have a stepdaughter, mm-hmm. you know, but that's my daughter. Yeah, that's yours, baby. But what's the difference? Like, w- w- I find no mind. difference whatsoever. Is it challenging? Was was, was their dad in the in the room? The, no, their dad's a piece of shit. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he knows it. And I told him to his face. And my daughter, my stepdaughter, my stepson, and my stepdaughter, they have. A very, very small, rare relationship with him. They'll talk to him once in a while. He knows it. I told him right after bath, I said, look, my man, I got nothing against you, but you, you stepped out this game a long time ago. You haven't done nothing with your, with my, with your, they weren't married. It was, yeah. you know, the kids really don't like him. And, you know, now they're older, they need to talk to him once in a while. Yeah. But they call me dad. 
So they prefer not to even associate with them. They do if they have to, but they call yeah. me dad. That's and, right. And I told him, I said, yo, peace out, brother. I said, I got nothing against you. Yeah. You want to talk to him, you can. That's on them, though. Mm-hmm. But don't come over here and tell me if I rep around or if your son calls me one day when he's 12 yeah, years yeah, old, yeah, that yeah, I yeah. Here. Don't come, don't, don't come play that daddy shit. Because besides I kick his ass, I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. <laughs> so you have nothing to do with you. You abandon them. You're in pay child support. Mm-hmm. You know, and all of a sudden you want to come into their lives and be daddy. Yeah. Do what you want. Disneyland dad is what we call them yeah. over here, too. <laughs> they want to well, my mother does the same in Spanish. Padre no el que, padre no el que hace, padre el que cría. Mm. You know? And you're doing the right job. My, kid, my, my two biologicals, and my, uh, just call, call them stepbrother, stepsister. They fucking flip on you. They'll start fighting all four of them for me. Oh, this is my daughter. This is my stepdaughter. That's her stepbrother. Hell no, that's my brother. That's my sister. That's right. <laughs> and, that's and right. All, and, my, and my older ones, my stepkids, just, but papi, papi this, papi that, daddy this. Nice. That's how it should be, man. And it's crazy because my stepdad is the one that raised me ever since I was two years old. I never met my father for the longest. So I never called my stepdad that. Or but now when, we got, when he got older, I said, Papi, Pa. But I, it was always Caesar. Caesar, come here. And mm-hmm. he didn't have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. Why, the, why all of a sudden did you call him dad? Or well, I always used to call him dad to my friends. It was my father. Right. My dad. But at home, like, Caesar, I don't know, it was just since we were kids. Cause, right. Because my mm-hmm. mother used to call him Caesar. Cesar, ben aquí, oh, Papi. So that's what we heard when we were kids. Oh, I got you. You know, like, you know, we, 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 that's what we learned. I mean, because he wasn't our father. Mm-hmm. Because we never had a father to call father. Right. Yeah. You know, you know our father, the guy we used to call father, we used to call him Poppy, was like our grandfather. Poppy. Right. So your that stepfather, was, you're saying you started calling him Pa later? Oh, or yeah. When I'm like in my 20s, I was calling Poppy. Yeah. Well, uh, pa, Pops. And, you know, I saw, I saw him cry one time when I did that. I said, yeah. Wow. Cause he never explained, it. and I, I, I never denied him. You don't, you, you don't know what that would mean. Yeah. If, if that were to happen with me in my scenario, same thing. I, I think I'd be like him. I cried with my daughter. You have to earn that shit. I called my stepdaughter. Yeah. She was last. She was the younger one, but my stepson. Yeah. The way I clashed with at first, or like not at first. Yeah. But like, when he's like in 13, 14. Yeah. I told him, go ahead, call your father. Tell him I did this to you. Look what you did. I don't give a fuck what you do to me. Respect your mother. He right. crossed the line with his mother. Fact. He crossed the line, oh, he crossed the line with my real. wife. That's I said, real. say one more shit about how I will fucking yoke you up. <laughs> you can do whatever. You throw a punch at me. You do whatever. Fuck, call me a dick. Call me a prick. Fucking swing at me. I'm not going to do it. But say something to your mother. I will fuck you up. Hey, right. That's another fair. time on, he, he, he moved out. He was like 12. He went to stay with my sister-in-law. Came back at 14 years old. We didn't kick him out. But you know, my wife was upset at him. From that day on, and he said, yo. He, called, he goes, he's always just telling his friends, this is my dad. And then one day he said, oh, Pa. You know, Puerto Ricans, we say, Pa, Ma, to everybody. Said, Papi. Yeah. What's up? But he said, Papi, your dad, come here. And then he showed me his phone. No, my daughter showed me her phone. No, she had her phone. And, and then she would grab my phone, brother. And she goes, I was going to call my phone. I can't find it. She goes, grab my phone. It's right there. I go, what's your number four? So I go, four, I said, Dad. <laughs> I cried. Damn. Damn. I looked at her for real. She goes, I go, this is your dad's number. She goes, no, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Calling you dad. Uh, hey. But I see what you're saying because it's not easy, bro. Nah, it's how not. Old is, how old is she? She's, uh, she'll be 17 next month. It'll get there. It'll get there. Yeah. That's what you seen say. that commercial? You, you guys don't have Publix out here, right? The, the food mm-hmm. store? No. There's a commercial in Tampa for a supermarket. And you see this little girl. The time she's grown up. Yeah. Birthdays. And the stepdad said, she called him by his name. Thanks. Uh, Chinga yeah. tu madre. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if She's 14. Pretty she, much. She gets hurt. <laughs> Thanks. Son of a bitch. She's 18. She got just from high school. And then, you know, thanks to uh, her stepdad. He goes, thanks, whatever. And then comes to the day of her wedding. And he comes in. He goes, you look absolutely beautiful. He goes, wow. She goes, thanks, dad. Dang. That Dang. broke, yo. That's a fucking commercial for a supermarket, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying that they help family, the feed family. And then, yo, that I, I've been recording from home. What a smart saying, marketing fucking bro, thing. Bro, you can yeah. see the man all dressed up and shit, and I remember that feeling. And she said, thanks, dad. And he fucking, bro, I'm a well up thinking about it. Yeah. I'm a sentimental dude, bro. For I'm sure. A, I, get real, I get real emotion with shit. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a softy when it comes to shit like that, especially yeah. with kids and family. For <laughs> sure. Because it's, you, you not, not, Na- na- what's it? Nature, nurture. Yeah, yeah, nurture, man. You'll yeah. get it, bro. You'll get yeah. it. You'll get it, man. You get it, man. Yeah. And dude. if it don't come, that you may not know, but deep down, she probably tell me she. You don't yeah. know what she's telling her friends. Yeah. Like that. My dad. Facts. 
And there's and a lot even of if they say step that, even if they say step but at least I know I did my job. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And, and that's all, all you. And that's, and all that's you all can. All do. I can do. Look, right now my stepdaughter, my older one, I call her Big Boss Bitch Lady. What? <laughs> 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 that's boss, a T-shirt. Big, big Boss Bitch Lady, cause she run the shit, you know. Yeah. And I guess maybe that's we we raised her a little bit, but she has her personal opinions about a lot of things. Yeah. You know, and we have a little bit of a falling out right now. Mm. So, you know, at the point it's like. That's not how I raise you and your mother raised you, but hey, do you? Yeah. Do you? There's nothing you can change. I nurture you. I know what I did. You know, you, t- you tell me, because the other day she texted me, pissed off, she called me by name. She said, okay, Pops, you know what? I said what I have to say, text me next time. So you know what I texted her? I said, okay, big boss bitch lady, peace out, bitch. <laughs> 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 and then I put LOL, and she goes, you're an ass. <laughs> exactly. And that was it. That was the last conversation I had with her in like three weeks. Yo, Swept under the rug. What happened in the fucking air? Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, because you got a fan over there. It's yeah, 100 man. degrees. Were, you, were you cold or what? No, I no, just No, that one, 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 that I heard a noise when you opened the door, so I wanted to see if it was that, but it was that. What was it? I forgot to turn it back on. I'm this a motherfucker over here. He's I'm always here. the hottest one, man. It'll be fucking cold. <laughs> He'll put on the fucking AC. AC is 65. <laughs> Uh, we just got one too. Shit, I see fucking putting work in the room. Where we at, Danny? Uh, we're like uh, an hour fifty plus thirty six <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so like two something. You want to hit it? No. Yeah, I think we should wrap it up now. Straight. Wait, you, you have any more? You got more? I'm, I'm, I'm good. Been I'm... Too much shit, huh? Man, you're a great comedy. We need part two on your ass. Man. I know. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we're good. <laughs> um, I don't get to talk much to people, so you know. Let's close it out. I let loose. Yeah. No, I love it, bro. We're. The candor. Hell yeah. We're I appreciate the question. I appreciate the hum- the, the, the humili- humility that you guys have. You know, you guys nah, we it. just, we, we real, dog. And, and that's, that's what It's like, you know what? Even if we weren't doing this shit right now, we'd probably be sitting here talking the well, same we shit. we were doing this shit two hours before when you first <laughs> we got were, here, my we boy. Know, we were yeah, three, yeah. four deep already. I get, <laughs> I get up, get battle rap his truck, we start talking, he goes, nigga, shut up. Wait till we get inside. <laughs> so we start walking, I say something, he goes, oh, man, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Watch wait, this. One last thing before we go. All right. All right. Now, as as much as you were sitting here 10 minutes ago complaining about not being on a motherfucking uh, album, oh, Steve shit. Wilcox was doing this and that. Mm-hmm. I've already asked you to be on the fucking the new album, Light Let's of go. Shade. But I see you got a Cypress Hill tattoo on your fucking arm. And? Where's fucking lighter shade of brown on your arm? <laughs> I, I, you know why? No. You know you know why? Because I'm already a lighter shade of brown. Ah. Toma! Ah. What's the story by the about the Cypress Hill test? Cypress Hill shit happened right when I met you guys. I was doing, I finished American Me. I fucking watched you guys fucking perform and watched ATL, watched fucking, uh, who else was at that show? Uh, oh, in the Santa Ana Bowl? In the Santa Ana Bowl. Oh, yeah, Cyber Black Frost, Sheep. Black Sheep. Uh, it was a grip. So I winded up, um, I was telling Robert, there was a set of congas. I don't know who they were. It was like, a, it was like some drums and some percussion on the side. And these guys had just finished. And Cypress, Cypress came after you guys, right? Yeah, they came after us. So I was, I was shaking hands with you and Bobby. And y'all were giving me hugs and shit. And all of a sudden, they start going down. And I see the congas. I'm sitting on the fucking, there was a speaker right next to it. And the, 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 the drums were on that side. It had not, it weren't, they were kind of on stage, but not on stage. So I'm looking at them, they were mic'd up and everything. And I'm like, all right, so I'm listening to this. Like, Boom, I'm feeling that shit. Don't you don't, don't say fuck this shit. <laughs> I was high as shit. I looked at the same shit like, yeah. And I go, go ahead. I put it in the corner. I, said, so I got up on that bitch. I started low key. I was like, take them. I was going real, real easy. I don't want to go too loud. I don't want to fuck them up. All of a sudden, Mark turns around and he goes, I started jamming. <laughs> he popped the mic. I, I got down after that. So they turned you up. They, they turned the shit up. I didn't know. And my sister's like, what the fuck? Where did that come from? And, and Be Real turns around and goes, he comes up to me. I thought he was mad. Yeah. I said, well, that's Muggs. Muggs told me to keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I stopped. He goes, no, no. So I kept going. After that, we hung out for the longest. And then, um, like, when I say hang out, I'm talking about just us four. It was me, Muggs, Be Real, Sen. And Melo was there once in a while. And Cartoon was hanging. And it was Steve. It was Stephen Rodian. And we were in, um, I want to say it was in Hollywood. I can't remember where it was. I think Cartoon had a little shop somewhere in Hollywood. And we're sitting there. And they were talking about Taz. I go, well, I ain't never going to get to her. I would like, but fuck it. 
So they dared me and said, well, get one of these. You one of us now. You show your loyalty. Says, bitch, fuck you. I told I told Muggs. Yeah. Muggs said, man, I said, you know what? I I would do it. You know, you guys let me hang out. You guys let me jam with you guys. If that made me an official member of the band, he goes, yeah, but we can't pay you. I said, well, fuck it. I don't give a shit. I just like to play. Yeah. So one thing led to another. I was sitting there, and um, Tune was there, and Pout tied me up. There was only four of them at the time. Muggs had it. It was B. Sand. Yeah, I think his uh, tattoo shot was off Sunset. Off of Sunset, yeah. And then he went over to Skid Row later. Yeah. Yeah, but that's how that came about. So then, so I, I is it out fair up. to say... I block out up. You guys gave him... You gave him the idea to bring on fucking Bobo. I don't know. I think I think they already had that idea because Bobo was with with with, with um be with real the for a Boys, long time with the Beastie Boys. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but Bobo was playing with the Beastie Bobo Boys. Bobo came from Beastie. Yeah, Boys. Bobo, him and and um and Miss uh, and what's his name, Mr. Mike. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, well, actually, Beastie Boys had um Hurricane first, DJ Hurricane out of New York, and then I think Mike came in with them later, but um Bobo was with them. But um, then when they did the Soul Assassin tours, I think you was weren't you guys on that one too? No, nah, we weren't on Soul Assassin. Yeah, I think it was the Beastie Boys, uh, House of Pain. And then um, Bobo was playing with the Beastie Boys and Cypress at the time. Yeah. So maybe I think, I don't know, maybe you're right. Shit, I'm going to find out about that shit. <laughs> That's just dope. But I let me tell you, Bo- 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 was a le- Bobo was a man. That boy's a beast. No, he gets down, no, for that sure. That a beast. I mean, I'm good, but, you know, I can't say how good I am because th- that'd be being stupid. I think Bobo's I, every- father played too. Bobo's or? father was the shit. Willie Bobo, he was a legend. There you go. He was a legend. I know go. I'm... Right. Willie, Bobo, Willie Bobo was a shit. Yeah. So, you know, of course it's in his blood and it's in DNA. Facts. And, you know, and there's other people... There, there are people that have that in their DNA that are bad and the d- people that have the d- that don't have it in their DNA, they think they're bad, they suck shit. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be straight the fuck up. This what goes back to what we were saying earlier? Tito Puente Jr. cannot play. I was about to say. Tito, Tito Puente Jr. cannot play. I, I played him one time. He got mad. He would never let me play Steam Ballers again. Oh, at shit. At a club in New York. He let me sit in with his band, and I fucking tore it up, I guess. And um, his band, some of his band members, that play, um, you know, the free nats. You know, the shit, he goes, and I was t- and, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was telling you about Sal earlier from War. Yes, yes. And Sal, like, legendary we toured with him, and that he was the only Latino on stage, and he was just Getting down the fucking Gwan guys. He still plays with them. Yes. I don't know which one. They have two different groups. Now. Yeah, no, they, they're all over. I mean, those guys, they're Giovanni Hidalgo, Sal, fucking uh, Carl Perazzo, Raul Racao, they, they played, there was a, the Conga played for, for Santana for many years, passed away a few years ago from cancer. All them boys, boys, I learned from all those dudes. And, you know, like I said, I've been playing since I was a little kid. Who's your favorite salsa group of all time? Group, I would say El Gran Combo. Or Artista. Or Artista, Artista Mark Anthony. Really? Mark, my, that boy's a beast. Mark Anthony <laughs> or, or or Enrique Iglesias? Dang. Mark all day. Joe Royal. <laughs> Mark all day. No gay shit. No. Mark homo. Anthony or Ricky Martin? Br- Mark Anthony. No homo gay. No, no. Let me just. But Ricky Mar- Ricky Martin is a good singer, but he's not a salsero. Now, if you want to go salsa, beside Mark, Victor Manuel. Shit. Reggaetonero. What about, Yankees uh, bad, but because he was a shit. Tengo Calderon. Celia Cruz. Celia was a salsera, the women. You want to go women, I'll go Celia. Then I'll go fucking Olga Tanyo. No, Olga Tanyo is more a merengue. Oh. I'll go La India. Mm. Oh. Let's talk Puerto Rican. ¿Qué tú quieres? The artist. <laughs> Artista Puerto Rican. Um, there was one I was looking up today. New guys or the old school? Old school. Old school. You got oh, you had um, Frankie Ruiz, one of my best friends. Ooh. One of my best friends. Hector Lavoe, of course, the cantante. And it's funny because a lot of these guys is crazy. The the legends <clears> and like, who would have thought? I would never think that I would be hanging out with those guys. I would get high with them all the time. Um, back then we were young, and most of them are dead now. You know, Hector died of a of, of AIDS. Oh, and okay. crazy. Uh, Frankie Ruiz died of a fucking you know drugs. My brother who's fucking eleven time champion. Thank God, thank God, you know he had his he had his habits, but um, he got murdered. Wrong time, wrong place. But Salcedo, Frankie Ruiz, my bro. that but, was now to me now Mark Mark's Mark's a king, Mark's badass. But if I was to pick between Frankie Ruiz and Mark, Frankie all day. Who's the one that dated or was married to J Lo? Mark. Mark Anthony. That's Mark. Mark. Okay. Little Which one? Mark Anthony, P Diddy, <laughs> yeah. uh, Ohani, ben Ohani, Shit. Ben Affleck twice, A Rod, still, Chris, Chris hey. Judd. Hey, A-Rod, no, he wasn't married to it. He was like, he was a short little motherfucker next to her. Who, Mark? Yeah. No, Mark is no, short. He's short. No. Compared Mark, to J-Lo? They're about the same height. Are they? Yeah. Mark's just tall and skinny. He's skinny. Yeah, he's Maybe skinny. I met him with, uh, okay, she had heels on, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on uh, Bad Bunny? Bad Bunny's bad. That was bad. I met him. That, that's a cool-ass motherfucker. Bad Bunny or Daddy Yankee? 
I go Yankee. Y'all, mm. that's I right. go Yankee. I go Yankee because of the the, the history and the, and the knowledge. Bad Bunny will get there. Didn't but Bad Bunny? Bad Bunny's not really a regotonero like that. Bad Bunny's more the funky, weird shit. You know, like the <laughs> rhythmic. Yeah, top, the yeah, top. yeah, yeah. Now you go Tego and you go Daddy Yankee. Yeah, Tego. Like Don Amar. No, Don Amar or Hector el Father. Don Amar. Oh, Hector the Father. Hector el Father. Hector el Father all day. If you know, you know. Let's go. Oh, Don Amar's bad, but... Yeah. I had the CD. Oh. Heck, Don, the, Hector the Father, he, he became a, a preacher or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, he, he left. He left. So uh, there was another dude, um, Julio Voltio. Oh. Yeah, the boy like that. Yeah. 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 I love that. <coughs> he became he be, he he left the, the the music thing and be, you know they all found God after yeah. fucking <laughs> La Pela got fucked up. Yeah, I was gonna Rico. say even Daddy Yankee just recently turned. Yeah, yeah he it's because FBI is coming down on Puerto Rico, bro. Man. FBI, CIA, DIA, all the motherfuckers they coming down on Puerto Rico. No, look at um, hear that shit. Look at what's his name, uh, Ravi Pina, producer. Uh huh. Uh, the, na, na, Nati Natalia's husband. Oh you know, yeah. He just ended up doing time on on a gun charge. He avoided prison for years. Big producer. He had Yankee. He's a fucking. Of course, Nati, Nati Natasha, whatever her name is. Yeah. Um, but he's got a Pino, Pino Records. I, don't, I think he's out of my, was Miami and Puerto Rico. Mm. And he's doing time. I guess he gets out next year, but millionaire. They couldn't find him on anything. They couldn't have shit, so they put him on a guard charge. Damn. It's just for, for guns and shit. Yankee's not stupid. What about, uh, what's his artist, Feliciano? Jose Feliciano? Uh, no, Jose. Did he have a... I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, or... No. <laughs> you mean not? Uh, not Jose. Cheo, 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 Cheo Feliciano. Cheo Feliciano. Cheo. Yeah. That was a man. Yeah. Right? Cheo, he he died in a car. He had that one hit. Uh, well, he had multiple, but there was one major one that I was looking. I can't remember the name uh, of it. Uh, uh, famous uh, today. De Cada Maya Sal Un Raton. That's it. De Cada Maya Sal Un Raton. Okay. Wow. I was trying to do my Puerto Rican research on singers. Mm -hmm. And Ana Cabona. Ana Cabona. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one that popped That's Ana Cabona. What about Joe Arroyo? He had a... Arriba. En los... En el año 1600. That's my shit. That's my go-to. Like with the bars, at the bars, you know? Oh, yeah. If you know, you know. Here we go. Latin night. And then, and then you go Latin jazz. Of course, Dito Puente was a shit, but then you had Adi Palmieri, um, Cal Jader, Willie Bobo, Bobo's father. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Who, had, who had all the females, though? Me. Like, what, what? <laughs> no, the, but the, the, in the I group. Had share, I, had the share, I, had, I had to share and give it away, man. That was good. I would say. <laughs> that, was that, was, that was good on me. The <laughs> singers, though. Shit. The singers, though. No, I no used to see, bitch, what you trying to say, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> shit. I thought you played conga, man. That, too. <laughs> I play the fiddle, I play the diddle, and I play the riddle. <laughs> <laughs> the beat. The beat. <laughs> now, um, Victor Manuel. Victor Manuel is a fucking, uh, he's, a, he's a Baja Panty. Oh, yeah? Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Victor Manuel is a shit. Him and fucking, the, there's one, uh, what's his name? Gilberto Santa Rosa, he's a little chuggy, but his love, he's like the, the what do you call it? The Barry White of Salsa hmm. in Puerto oh, Rico. Yeah, I remember him, Santa Rosa. El, Caball El Caballero de la Salsa. Hey, fool, one last thing before we bounce. Pull up this movie called Sweet 15. Oh, hell no. And I want to, I want <laughs> you to see this fool's haircut. Nigga, it wasn't a haircut. It was hair. I got fucking, yeah, you're right. I got fucking, <laughs> like, clowned my whole career because of my Sunday afternoon cut, I right? remember that shit, too. The fucking bowl cut, right? No, I, 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 I claim that shit because that shit see, when is you timeless, see, motherfucker. When you see that movie that we were talking one about earlier, Saints and Sinners, Nigga, I had stripes, I had fucking arrows and shit. I had initials in the back. I had my <laughs> ponytail, dreadlocks. I mean, not dreadlocks, but the braids and shit. Hey, what's up with your and computer? That shit's stuttering like a motherfucker. Yeah, I, I always had my the, freak, I always had the, my tail. You had yeah. the tail? I had a reptile in the front and one in the back. The one, yeah, for, I That's fucked, not bad. This one, I fucked up breaking. When the headspin fucking ripped it from the fucking root down. Oh, my gosh. After the headspin, I popped up. The whole fucking hair was in my skin. I was like, what the <laughs> no fuck? Shit. Damn. Never grew back. Well, it grew back later. But then, like, as I got older, it, it, it wouldn't grow back again. Where are all these likes R. coming? R.I.P. Rat Tail. That's weird, huh? Those are live likes. That's tight. Yeah. But, like, we're not even live. Well, they're, that's probably coming from uh, YouTube, uh, the CNG. But barely? Oh. People are watching yeah, it. yeah, yeah. yeah. How pretty that lady is. <laughs> Not him. Well, it's weird because like when I'm using the internet and it's watching like a video, it like lags it. Even though I'm connected to Yeah, it's all good. 
Well, I wanted you to see. He had a big, big ass Johnny O do fucking Is that a pick? fantasy, Johnny fantasy girl, girl fucking Johnny do. Oh, yeah, he looked like one of fucking Gerardo's fucking backup <laughs> dancers. Fool, remember the backup because he had the that the was bullets. Hugo. The that, bullets were in. No, that you. Was, no, but but Gerardo's guy was Hugo. He was fucking, oh, uh, Hugo, yeah, that was Sugar Pop's brother. There was two guys, uh, Hugo and, and um, Coco. Yeah, Coco's out in Norris County still. He's still dancing. Coco uh, was one of the dancers. Yeah, you remember Coco? Little Coco? No, 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 big Another Coco. Coco. No. He was, uh, big Coco. His two backgrounds, uh, his dancers. I just remember the day when he was on the news when they brought Gerardo. <laughs> New sensation. Uh, you know, those, were, th- those were extensions and shit. Is it that one? Yeah, for sure. No. <laughs> Damn. No. Shut up, Jason. What the fuck? Don't hate because I, I have more hair. Don't hate because I have more Don't hate because I have more hair than you. Spring love, the mullet. The come mullet. back to me. The mullet. No, the fact that you're like, no, that's, that's not like even some, the one. Uh, the that's like some, the but that's fucked up because I didn't make it. I used to braid it. I just had one long pony. Yeah, los bookies. Los bookies. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey but since this, since this photo's up, the chick on the left, didn't she play in La Bamba? Was she Rosie? No, she was in uh, Stand and Deliver, Carla Montana. Oh, She was okay. in Stand and Deliver. She was in Color. She was a beautiful woman. I thought she was We actually Rosie. dated for a little while. Oh, yeah? Wow. Yeah. Just for a little while. <laughs> a little while. Look at him. Look at him. It was work. It was work. It was work. It was work. <laughs> no, there was a video, but just a little while. Just, just like a yeah. year. No. Where where you walk? There's a scene where you walk in. Anyway, Sweet Fifteen. Number one. Why they call it Sweet Fifteen? Because it, it was. It was it's, it's, it's it's a quinceanera. It's based on a quinceanera. But why they call it Sweet Fifteen? Because why did they call it quinceanera? Because you know it, it was PBS. So, you know, just say it. Sign of the times. Prove me right. Time, sign of the times. And, sign know, of the times, right? Because the they were afraid to put a fucking Spanish title, right? It was Spanish title because you put that on and nobody's going to see it. All the green goes in school. Know it. Now, let me tell you, believe it or not, this movie is is a learning tool in schools and then in middle schools. You know how I found out about it? I knew it was done for like PBS type shit. I found out because my daughter in Tampa, when she was in middle school, my little one, came home crying to me. I said, what's wrong? She goes, don't you ever come and pick me up and take me to school again. I said, what the fuck is wrong with you? Uh-huh. No. She goes, please don't. Don't embarrass me. What are you talking about? She goes, my Spanish class. They made us watch this movie. I go, okay. <laughs> when she was little, she was like, hey, he was on it. When she was little at home, she watched that movie. She'd be on the floor. Right. <laughs> like I was in, like, she was in love with her dad because she, she, the dad that she saw there was a different person that she knew. You know, mm-hmm. she would see this guy. She knew it was me, mm-hmm. but she was like, "Wow, he's cute." <laughs> and she would, she would be like the movie Ramon, right? So when the, I find out, she was they're showing this shit in my school. And she said shit for the first time. She was like in fourth grade, fifth grade. I oh. said, "What?" She was please don't. But then she's all my friends know. Isn't that your dad, Ita? And she said she was so embarrassed. But then two days later, she goes, "Wait a minute, my teacher is helping me out with a lot of shit now." That's right. She goes, Could you can you come so they can show it again next week? Uh. That's right. All of a sudden. Yeah, but but they show it a lot of school because it deals with the with the coming of age of a young girl. Mm-hmm. And then she realizes her father, who is raised in the United States, who speaks perfect English, didn't have papers. Mm-hmm. So he's about to get deported. So I'm she helps yeah, she helps this character that I play is mm-hmm. a little older. I play like a, a almost eighteen year old <laughs> put it on. A seventeen year old that she falls for <laughs> and I fall for her. But mm-hmm. the parent the, the father didn't like me. Because I was a little older and I was a little, you know, dangerous, so to speak. Yeah, typical, like, you know, and as a matter fact, protective I, dad, I, like, sees him walk in the room. There was a right. scene, and, like, you grabbed, like, you gave homeboy, like, a piece of cake. You said, step to the side. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you know, he was, like, the cool dude, yeah, John, yeah, Johnny yeah. Odu. You know, I, yeah, it, it deals with music and salsa and shit. I teach a girl how to do salsa music. So, you know, you I see, recommend people go. I haven't even seen this it's shit. It's actually but a really good film. Clip, yeah. I have great actors in myself, of course. Not that I'm a great actor. But Carla Montana, who played the girl, she's wonderful. Uh, uh, Wait, what year was it? I would say 90. 90, right? 90, 91. Yeah, yeah before okay. American Me. She had Ooh, still had nothing up to Stand and Deliver. Oh, no, Stand and Deliver was done, but it wasn't out yet. But Tony Plana was in it, who's been around forever. Uh, lady named Jenny Gago, Liz Torres, great Johnny cast. Gago, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jenny Gago's in it. Uh, myself, of course. Um, she's a uh, pretty legendary too, right? Gago? She's Jenny was great. She was also in um, Blood and Blood. She was that's she was right, mother. that's right. And Tony Plana was in the Mayans. Tony Plana's been around and everything. He was in Ugly Betty, the TV series. Okay, he played the father. Mm-hmm. All right, he's the one that played her father in this. Um, you couldn't find it. 
What the video? No, it was like lagging it. Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, I don't I mean, shit, that's why it's that old. Is I, yeah. I, 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 I think I saw that thing one time. I thought it was a great piece only because I'll insert it. The educational. That's what she said. Go, <laughs> 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 Megan. Ah, ah. Puppy, puppy, puppy. Hey, chill, puppy. Hey, chill, puppy. Hey, watch it. No chonchon. Down, puppy. <laughs> Not gonna give him no chonchon. No booby. Chonchon. Only. We gotta get Papa out too. That motherfucker's funny as hell. Uh. That's crazy. Quick with it. You know, you know, you know him, right? No, 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 no. I no, I, I don't know him. I'll get it for you. <laughs> yeah, I heard they're doing a lot of. Uh, he's doing a lot. Of, so he's running around everywhere. But you know, that's good though. A lot of these nineties is back, baby. We're we're back. Nineties is just like fucking never dies. Taking over right now. It never did. You know what it was? We just went on pause. Right. Yeah. We just went on pause to see all these other fools come up with some stupid shit. <laughs> and then we say, you know what? Fuck it. It's time. Get, get, get yeah. to the back. Go to the back of the bus. Yeah. Facts. I believe it. Look. What you guys did was iconic, you know. What we did, yeah, is iconic. You yeah. see, I mean, I, I get surprised because, and I'm pretty sure you do. You see some of these young kids that don't didn't know shit about you or me five six years ago. Now they're like, yo, man, fucking on a Sunday afternoon, night of shit, you know, yeah, I'm loving that shit. Yeah, kids, fucking ten year old kids come up to me Facts. with their parents. The parents, well, you seen American Me? First of all, I get pissed off. You know, how you gonna let a ten year old? Well, it's good. It's educational. But a little nineteen year old kid see that movie. That's a very harsh movie. Right. My wife couldn't see it until she was older. My my daughter still hasn't seen it. And yeah. she's twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> and she will refu- she'll refuse to see it. For two reasons. One, because she knows what you know, she knows what happened. Right, 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 right. After right, the right, making right, right. of the shit. So she was scared for me. And for two, you know, the, the whole thing that happens to the character. Yep. And for three, that I show my ass. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, that I do not want to see that shit. Yeah. Yeah, dad's she, gross, dad. Yeah, so well, too late now. How you think you came about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for this ass, you wouldn't be here now. Damn. <laughs> yeah, your mother liked that ass. She said, Toma, and it was all over with. <laughs> sort of the guy in the film, but anyway. Yeah. Oh, oh, my <laughs> damn. How, how do you know? You watch, hey. that, you watch that so many times yeah. that you remember that? Watch that. Uh, not as many takes as you had on yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many times did it take you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got it for you. He said, take 10. Uh, yeah. so how did it feel doing that? I go, turn around, motherfucker, I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> I would never ask that question. No, this fucking Cholo do it when we did Miguel Loca. It was a crazy story. I forgot to tell you that one. What happened? One of the little Cholo guys. From, he, but he was 18. No, the next day he was turning 18, he fucking punked me. I was sitting there, come out of my dressing room. Oh, that's what the from American. They call him zombie because he, apparently he died three times. Yeah. He's about to die the next day, though. <laughs> Nigga won't be no zombie no more. Yeah, yeah. I found out how is this little fucker. Big, so he's gonna be 18. I'm like, all right, cool. Let me keep talking shit. Because uh-huh. I mean, the next day, he's, yo, man. That's all right, man. You fucking let them, you, they, you let them take your cupcake. No, you call me, call you. you let them take your pie, see? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you been a joint? You been a joint? Yeah. I go, how many times? You're like, a whole bunch. I go, so you know how it feels, then, right? What do you mean? I go, you know, you know, the pie hole. That nigga flipped on me. I fucking punched his ass. It was funny that he stopped. He, we were friends after that. He tried to come and said, bitch. No, oh, so, so you took it up the ass. I go, you've been in real jail. I got paid. <laughs> you gave it away for free. Fuck. I said, you gave it away for free, fool. <laughs> How come every, everybody you beat up, you fucking become friends with? Because I'm a nice guy like that. You told me that off air. I forgot who we were talking about. Uh, I, I didn't become friends with him. We, we were acquaintances. We oh, said, that's right. Yeah, only yeah. one person. We'll keep that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go as fast as Furious. Couple. Yeah, I'm not no man. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going too fast too Furious on this one. <laughs> oh, we're going to leave it at that. Pachisco Gomez, ladies and gentlemen, on the Blackout Podcast. Hopefully, it was a pleasure for you as it was for us, man. We we almost did what three hours, bro. Damn, it's bro, I broke the record. Hey, that dad that played uh, in Happy uh, Three Fifteen, he was in Goal Two, huh? He was a dad. Okay, we're yeah, not yeah, closing yeah. out right no, now. Yeah, yeah. So you talking about Tony Plana, the old guy? Right. Yeah, he was yeah. A dad, huh? Yeah, he was and a dad. Kuno Becker, and then yeah, the mom played Nagy. Dolores and blood and blood great out. Fucking Nagy. He's done a lot of shit. Yeah, he's dope. Yeah, yeah that's it. I just wanted to know that. That's it. That was yeah. it. Sick yeah. Just kidding. Yeah, that, I just wanted we to know. To to thing? I know my actors. We're, we're the live chat this yeah. time. <laughs> well, first and foremost, thank you, the Black Up Party, for inviting me. I had a great fucking time. Sorry oh, yeah. I took all your time now, and it's time for me to go eat. Hell <laughs> yeah. yeah. By the time you guys see this shit, you better, you know you can pause it, go to intermission, grab some popcorn, because it's going to be a long movie. Hey, brother. <laughs> Cheers I want to say thank you, man, for just being humble and being you, bro. Because thank you, I know we both could relate, brother. You know, just being in this industry, it's fucking wild and crazy. But we can look at each other eye and eye and say, you know what? These are two humble motherfuckers. Hey, man, you know what? I can see that in you. I feel the energy, bro. And we, and we both fucking fought to get to where we're at. 
Mm. Even though we're not at the complete position we want to be, we we made but you we the made start our of we it, made though. we made our marks. You the start still, of it, and we're though. still going on. Thank yeah. you, man. Thank you, brother. ODM. Thank you, brother. True Appreciate legend, yes, sir. You. Bobby, this was for you, Bobby. Love you. God bless you in the heaven. Facts. End it like that. But with that Fast and Furious, we're gonna fucking glorify that shit. <laughs> <laughs>